ready? Yes. Yeah, I need recording. joke. We're recording. Do Jesus, it. Let's go. Okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> Welcome to another episode of Murder Schmurder. Murder Schmurder. Murder Schmurder. Back in the house. That's right. We're here again. I think it was Austin who went murder schmurder. You like the book? You want? You want to do it again? Yeah, do it again. Murder Schmurder! Coming at you live. Man, dude, I want to get into a fight with my shirt off when you talk like that. Yeah. That sounds like a ringside <laughs> announcer, I want to take my pants off. And <laughs> yeah. Have too many Coors Lights and talk about Charlene, that bitch. <laughs> Gonna fucking take my clothes off, jump in a vat of butter, and run across the street and see how many <laughs> cops it takes to tackle me down. That's right. Y'all pigs like it greasy. Come on, see? Coming in the ring at 300 pounds of pure muscle is Joey Smokes. Joey the Freight Train Smokes. <laughs> chugga, 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 chugga. And With he's him. up against his ex-wife, who's a complete bitch, Charlene. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get my kids back, Charlene. <laughs> and for our next fight. <laughs> he don't never no pay no alimony. The mile of mustache. <laughs> <laughs> Austin, the Italian seal. <laughs> <laughs> Not the Italian stallion like that just went over them. <laughs> they, uh, they call his, him the Italian. <laughs> yeah, his, his wrestling name is the Italian. The Italian. <laughs> <laughs> it's a him <laughs> And in the other corner We've got Jaime The brown Maluna They call me the brown <laughs> angel of the south <laughs> The brown mile, <laughs> the brown mile. <laughs> There's a brown mile in his fucking underwear That's for sure <laughs> He always forgets the wife. <laughs> but he never forgets to kick ass. Better hope you don't become the toilet paper. <laughs> you're going to end up a skid mark. Charlene, you're going down today. We're taking you down a notch. And last but not least, we have Grant the Grizzler. I don't know where no. you go. Do Grant the lawnmower man, Bramley. <laughs> uh, hold on, what is it that you called me on on, on the uh, on the calendar? Oh, uh, it was Austin the other white meat. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Austin the other white meat. Honestly, I like coming up with nicknames for everybody, but if I have to keep doing that for every calendar event, I'm gonna get, they're gonna start to repeat. I'm just gonna tell you guys now. <laughs> Grant, you didn't do your wrestling voice. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I got you. Hold on. <laughs> no, 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 I'm, no doing, I'm doing a bit Don't worry, but just give me a second No, I'm actually doing work I'm trying to make sure that we're not just speaking into nothing Uh, hi <laughs> That's my wrestling character All right. <laughs> He's real shy He's scared to talk to the girls Anti-social is thug We think he might be on the spectrum <laughs> Grant, no one asked me to the Sadie's Hawking Dance Bramley <laughs> Grant, no loud noises Bramley <laughs> <laughs> Grant, seriously, no flash photography, please. Grambler! Grant, do you want to talk about trains? Grambler! Uh, yeah, that'd be nice. <laughs> He doesn't have autism. He just gets scared by the color blue sometimes. <laughs> we, make sure he's out of the house before you start vacuuming. <laughs> His entire rider was Bazooka Joe Bubblegum. Did we just write a sketch? Because God, that's a sketch I would watch. Oh. Speaking of which, we need to we need to start brainstorming our next sketch show. By the way, dude, honestly, uh, I was thinking of that, and that's the first. That's the opener sketch. Yeah, <laughs> that is the opener sketch. It's the fucking wrestling, <laughs> <laughs> the autistic wrestler. <laughs> The ex wife Charlene's like, I feel uncomfortable. <laughs> I was just going to get beat up by my husband again. But I can't. This feels weird. 
<laughs> we really should do a wrestling bit. Is he wearing a helmet? <laughs> and I do, I do love the idea of a just insanely autistic. <laughs> That's just, it comes, it comes out to, unsure as to, to why no he's theme there. music <laughs> whatsoever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All of us are yelling in our deepest voices. <laughs> you going down, Charlie? Stop! Stop! You can't! You can't yell at him. Sorry! 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 sorry. <laughs> going down, Charlene. <laughs> Now, Grant, you're going to go down. Uh-huh. <laughs> Don't growl. He's scared of dogs. <laughs> uh, God damn it. Okay. Well, uh, are you guys familiar with the, the trend of what is called trad wives? Yes. Hell yeah. yeah I'm not too familiar, no. Uh, oh, so it big for, tits and bigger morals. <laughs> traditional wives. Traditional wives. But it, I'm on. I'm on board. they should be. They're, Sorry. Uh, Still in wrestling. Mode. Getting more and more popularity on TikTok and Instagram mm. Reels. Oh. And um, our well, generation, are we gonna, are we, too. Are we going to talk about the girl Weirdly that recently? Enough, yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 Okay. So we're going to, let me get there. Yeah. Let me get there. Okay. I think so, they're referred to as Sigma females. Pretty much, well, so the big thing <laughs> of why now there there's a lot of uh, infamy now growing around it is because a lot of these trad wives are doing videos of like, my husband wanted a sandwich, and so I made the bread from scratch, and then I made the cheese from scratch. And right. a lot of people are pointing out, like, that's not a traditional wife. What you're doing is basically just saying how wealthy you are. Not only with Look, money, be but treat- also time. If you want to be treated right. like a queen, you got to treat your man like a king, all right? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, right now, our our engineer... <laughs> our engineer... Our engineer Grant? Our engineer Jules is driving over here at 140 miles an hour. <laughs> just straight into the house. <laughs> she somehow is like also editing this and hearing it at the same time and is retroactively beating our asses. <laughs> wait, wait. Her Austin's being a jackass senses are tingling. <laughs> also, she complains about trad wives a lot. <laughs> so there's one trad wife that has really blown up on the internet recently, um, namely for this little clip. Everybody I know who's married right now, they're br- married to broke ass niggas. Lily Gaddis received huge backlash after her video, as many were outraged by the hate speech. Whoa, Pussy, you didn't the play the original there. video. Didn't play, oh, I didn't play the whole the original thing. video. <laughs> Dude, hang on, I got the f- the full edited. video is awesome. And Dude, there's a hard R. Can I just say that, like, uh, I, no, was, there's no hard, hard, hard R. R. You said oh, Trent wife, Sorry, and right, I was right. like, I was like picturing this lady because I heard about this. So I'm sick and tired of all girls getting blamed or like guys, certain guys thinking that all girls are gold diggers. I don't know if it's because you get your information from those street interviews in like Miami at 3 a.m. outside the nightclub. You're getting the opinion of some dumb whores and uh, immigrants fresh off the boat looking for a green card. Yes, they are probably... (laughs) It, that, oh. part, that part skimmed over. That part, yeah. Nobody is uh, go, playing I, that I, part. I, I was going to say, all I've heard is the N-word, not the fresh off the boat <laughs> thing, which just goes to show how badly <laughs> she fucked up in a few Christ. seconds. Gold diggers, but that's the exception. I'm the rule. Everybody I know who's married right now, they're married to broke ass So a recent video of mine seems to... And then after she gets called out, she does this quote-unquote apology video. We have um, upset members of a certain community, and it this... <laughs> Um, all the backlash community. just really made me, you know, just really do a deep dive, like do a soul search. And after all that, I still couldn't find a care. <laughs> <laughs> she couldn't find a care. Oh, that dumb bitch doubled down. Yeah. <laughs> I would say that's awesome. That dumb might be bitch. your wife. No. The double down? No. The double down. I mean, the double down is fine, but <laughs> that's, what, double down is fine. that's what got him hard. <laughs> but what's making him stop is everything previous. Yeah. yeah. Look, look you, you can't say the N word in my home. That's all. Mm-hmm. That's all I'll say. Um, but I will say this: uh, what when when one bad things happen, I think one great things happen. Have you guys seen the Edmonton Oilers flash video? No. There's a fan that got a little drunk, flashed her titties, and it blew up for a day until like you can't find the video anymore. Damn. And this lady came out and she was like, "You know what? I got drunk and I flashed my titties at a hockey game." And if you don't like that, fuck you. And I was like, 
Now that <laughs> she's a hero. Yes. <laughs> An American hero. <laughs> I have never seen a better t- a better pair of titties in my entire life. I would go to war for these titties. Canada could start World War Three, and you know whose side I'd be on. Hey baby, uh, you want to come to the White House? I can give you a little Congressional <laughs> no, no, no. Medal of Freedom. No, 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 no. I'm fucking jumping the border, and I am joining up. I don't even know what the fucking military is called, but I'm I'm getting right the in Canadian there. military. Yeah, what, what what's like the, the red tough co- mooses? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're the tough moose regiment. What, what's uh, what's their, the, their police force is the Mounties. The Mounties. Yeah, uh, I don't Canadian know. military. The, uh, maybe the maybe Canadian they're Army. yeah maybe the Marine Corps is the Mooses. I don't know the Mooses. Hey. <laughs> 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 yeah, seriously, if you're at a sports event, you have a few drinks, f- fucking pop a titty out, flash flash your pecs. Buddy, I'm telling yeah, you, it, yeah. I don't care. Dude, I mean, sober's have you, fine have too. You not, have you not seen these? Mm-mm. Oh my god, they're called tits and they're awesome. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I can't stress enough. They're really they're great. pretty great. They're really great. Oh, no, like yeah. these things are fucking some uh, gagoongas. Mm. Nice. And she flops around. They're 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 they're, they're doing they're fucking... doing their thing. Oh, so she's a lady with back problems. You say? Oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. And, th- and these things are like going into orbit, dude. <laughs> <laughs> right, Edmonton Oilers. Those are my you favorite kind like, of Oilers. Uh, like when you were a kid, when you wanted to like swing all the way around the swing. Set. Yeah, yeah, that's what yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. I was thinking right. more like you know, like the video model of like an atom, and you see the electrons were going around. Oh yeah, that's yeah, it. That's yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I was thinking of a Ferris wheel. <laughs> <laughs> We've all got different like imaginations. A, look at our creative <laughs> brains. <laughs> look at this table. <laughs> we're artists. <laughs> <laughs> hey, speaking of which, for real, I've fully committed to the idea of mounting a um, monitor somewhere in here that I can queue stuff up to. Hell yeah. One that we can all look at something at the same time and talk about it. But more importantly, for my uh, wrap up. For the Edmonton Oiler put, titties? I'm is that what you're about to say? Up. Yeah. Oh, nice. Oh, that's good. It's going to put up tits. Movies. We're just all going to stop talking and be like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, back to the episode. Yeah. This is Murder Murder with Joseph, and I'm so glad you guys are here. We were, oh, we were uh, also talking for- about. I'm sorry. We were also talking about potentially filming episodes. Yeah. yeah. So uh, thank you for that great segue. So uh, we Thanks are going segue, to, Austin. We are going to start I filming our episodes and posting them. <laughs> but when you do to our Patreon, so Yay. please subscribe to our Patreon if you don't already. It helps us do episodes and pay our editors and. Honestly, it's a great thing because you get more content and we get to keep doing this. We get to do more things. We get the opportunity to make more stuff for you guys. It's a self-perpetuating loop. Give us money. Also, if you like and want to help and support us even more, if you go to our trashworld.shop or trashworldshop.usa website, if you go to all our links, we have a whole bunch of merch available now. We got Shirts, we got hats, we, we got, got pants, hoodies. we got hoodies, we got hood. pants, we, we got, got everything. We have bro. hoodies, we, we got, got fucking, everything. We got so joggers. You, yeah, you, what? You can do Trashville hoodies. You can do Murder Schmurder hoodies. And I did a a collab where you can have like certain items with both Trashville and Murder Schmurder. We could we could do Cute. like yoga That's pants funny. too, right? Um, do we have any I, hats with our sayings on them yet? Not yet. We, we, we got, we That's go. the next step. What I about novelty some. underpants? I do like the. I, I, like, I want. I like the idea. I want the thongs. That's what yeah. I'm thinking, like. Yeah. yeah. Classy. Yeah. 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 Keep I like it classy. the idea of genitals around our brand. You know what we should do? We should do murder schmurder thongs, and then each one you can pick the you can pick a little face, and it'll be one of our faces on it. Just smiling. Just up. big old big old shit eating grin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's, that's good. That's good. I, that's good. I, I, cool I specifically said shit eating grin. <laughs> Because it's on your underwear. Yes, yes. yes. No, yeah, that's yeah. very good. Yeah. Yes. I'm wearing my Austins right now. <laughs> <laughs> Today's a Joey day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got a bad case of the Jamies. <laughs> it's wrong in case anything goes wrong. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to get a lot of stuff done today and be a super adult. I'm going to be a Grant today. Yes. <laughs> Whoop. <laughs> right up in there. Uh, I had too much Indian food. I gotta go take a Joey. <laughs> yeah, damn. Yeah, no, he's right. That's why. That's why yes. I wasn't at the gym this morning. Very Literally, <laughs> that's the exact reason. Very See? accurate. I ate two cups worth of mango habanero mm-hmm. sauce, just dipping old naan in it, and uh, I was like, "Oh, this will mm, be great. This and is gonna be a great. This is a great idea." Yeah, I woke up an hour late and just laid a shelf in the toilet. I got. I got- <laughs> 
<laughs> Look, I don't mean I don't mean to be uh, insensitive, but I got to think about Indian food and how it consistently looks the same going out as it does going in, and I just can't do it, man. I, I, I people love say Indian that, food. but I don't. I'm I don't, not saying that does it tastes phenomenal. It tastes, it's, it's so good, it's, but it hurts. It hurts a it lot. Hurts, man. I know. It's 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 just because I mean, look at us. Our bellies have not genetically adapted to that level of spice. No. And that's okay. I will fucking destroy my body. I don't do hard drugs anymore, so now I got to do it with spice. <laughs> mm. I, mean, I kind of like, with you on that. I was literally just about to say, you know how people who are like, I'm not much of a weed smoker because I immediately go to like existential crisis. Yeah. Instead mm. of watching a cartoon movie and enjoying it, I'm pacing around the house in the dark being like, what have I done with my life? Where are my Joey <laughs> pants? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> they were right here. And, and weed smokers are always like, you just got to power through that. And I'm like, that sounds hard. Power through it. But I you do though. I do power through Indian food. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, eat it for the or first I'm time in a long my time, forehead. and you're just like, that was the worst <laughs> like mistake I've ever made. Poly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> Sweating into your food. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is <sighs> these peppercorns. You got any more bread? I need more bread. <laughs> some naan. Some naan without spice on it. It's all spice. Bring it anyway. <laughs> Clarified butter, ghee. Why not? Now I get back like a I shot. just want milk. <laughs> Give me the milk. <laughs> oh, love it. Um, who's doing today's episode? Is that you, Grant? That'll be me. Grant. Oh, shit. Holy put shit. Put on your grants, everybody. Shit. Everybody, everybody put on your grant panties. Pull up them grant jockeys. Shit. <laughs> I'm turned on. <laughs> so. I've decided, in a way, to take over Jamie's SoundCloud corner. Ooh. You're welcome, oh. everyone. You're welcome. <laughs> we'll see. <Zinger. laughs> and run with the music idea to cover musicians that have most likely, or allegedly, merdered. Uh, merdered. <laughs> Basically, I'm going to be pushing the boundaries of separating the art from the artist. Right? Today is the rock and roll icon, the man who constantly tried to compete with and overtake Elvis Presley, Jerry Lee Lewis. <laughs> exactly. He fucked, <laughs> he fucked up. Lot. For real. He's super fucked up. Uh, he assaulted bandmates on the bandstand, shot his bass player, probably killed a couple of his wives. Um, like on accident? I killed my wife and I put her to rest. <laughs> and then I shot my bass player in the chest. <laughs> they both are dead. <laughs> and I just said, oh, goodness gracious, I'm fucking crazy. <laughs> that was good. Thank you. That was very good. good, Austin. <laughs> <laughs> you should play him in the biopic, man. That was good. I shall. Yeah. I shall. Yeah. You You already did better than fucking was it Dennis Quaid that did the 2005 movie, oh, yeah. the biopic. Yeah. It's terrible. Fairly counts. Dennis yeah. Quaid is very hit or miss. Yeah. Uh, he basically made, he was like Foghorn Leghorn. Like, as Jerry Lee Lewis. <laughs> I've, was, I've also incredible. heard that Dennis Quaid is an asshole. <laughs> I have heard that too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> also, I Grant. Wayne. I wouldn't know. So Dennis Quaid, if you want to come on the fucking podcast. Yeah, I mean, you may not be an asshole. Clear your name. Defend yourself. Dick. Or be an <laughs> asshole on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> or just come in and fight I'm us on air. You out. <laughs> <laughs> Grant, I have to say, I absolutely love when you're like, very good, so and so. <laughs> because it feels like, like, I, like when you ever tell me, like, very good, I feel like a dog that just got a treat. I'm like, yay. <laughs> <laughs> I, wrote, <laughs> I, I wrote the entirety of a joke in the group text the other day. It was the only one to be like, that was a really good joke, Austin. And I appreciate you, you took the time to write the whole thing. <laughs> you deserved it because, like, <laughs> You wrote, he wrote that people. It was a couple paragraphs. It was, it was such a, a long joke. It was, it was a good. wall of text and a long, an Austin style joke where the payoff <laughs> is so worth the ten minute wait. I love, I love, I love jokes like and, that. And like I started doing some stuff, and then I went back and looked at it, and I was like, Austin deserves to be recognized <laughs> absolutely for his effort. Good, left it all on the field. It's it's kind of Norm Macdonald esque. Yeah, you know, <sighs> R.I.P. Norm Macdonald. Uh, I loved him. I loved him to death. Is he dead? Yeah. yeah. Died of cancer, right? Oh, I think so. Yeah. Was it cancer? Yeah. yeah. When? Like, oh, man. Maybe recently. Like a little while ago. I thought it was like, like three recently. years ago. Yeah, like a couple years. How did you not know that Norm McDonald's dead? It was a big thing. It was a huge deal. That's Are you going to be able to do the episode now? <laughs> he died like three years ago. I know. I yeah. missed this. <laughs> There's been a lot going on, to be fair. It's hard to True. keep up with everything. <laughs> it kind of is, man. It's a lot. I was actually just listening to him on like a podcast the other day. 
<laughs> yeah. And I was like, oh, thank God he's still alive. Right. It's probably AI at this That's point. That's when I learned that people <laughs> record podcasts and post them later. <laughs> 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 I'm so smart. <laughs> yeah, hey, yeah, I'm dead. <laughs> but I just saw an episode of Golden Girls yesterday. <laughs> Betty White's dead. <laughs> that was another big one. Oh, wait, yeah. who's still doing a weekend update? <laughs> so, so, <laughs> love like so long ago. Love Betty oh, no. White's dead. I wouldn't say as big. I mean, she was like what nine? She was ninety nine. It right? was her time. It was she was ninety nine. Yeah. It was well past her she time. She's very old. Yeah. yeah. I think they were going to put her on like People magazine for like living up to a hundred. Yeah, she like died yeah. like a month. She was like, <laughs> <laughs> to, like she changed said, the cover and everything. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> Honestly, that's kind of a Betty White move. I feel Absolutely. like to be like, you know what? No, <laughs> I, I, I swear she was at, the, at one point. I think she was like the female Bill Murray, where she was just like constantly showing up and just being funny. Yeah, being a funny old woman. I don't know why my brain immediately went to like the Bill Murray and the. Uh, the zombie movie where he's like he dies. Zombie oh, Land? zombie! He Land? dies. Yeah, yeah. He, he dies. He's like, <sighs> <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> and then the girl starts laughing. He's like, no, he's <laughs> he's <laughs> done. <laughs> sorry, he just gets me. <laughs> yeah. I just, I really like that too. Where he's like, any regrets? And he's like, not really. <laughs> Maybe Garfield. Maybe Garfield. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I, I gotta I gotta rewatch that movie. That's yes, a good one. I love that. I, I remember she she like hosted yeah. SNL one at one point, and they did that. It was it was an old uh, Alec Baldwin bit about the uh, fucking like the bakery. He's like everybody likes my sweaty balls, mm. and for her mm. they did dusty muffins. Oh yeah yeah, 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 yeah! That was actually a really great episode of SNL. Yeah, mm-hmm. do these muffins have cherries? Oh, my muffin hasn't had a cherry in quite a long time. <laughs> <laughs> kind of stuff. Yeah, everyone yeah. loves the taste of my dusty muffins. Yeah. <laughs> I loved it in Grandma's Boy. You remember that movie? Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it was a fucking stupid ass movie. I loved it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, anyways, I'm gonna start this bitch off with start it uh, off. Go yeah. pretty bitch and little quote. Autism uh, Grant back in the building. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look at him while he reads. <laughs> By the way, that's just a character. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so he keeps saying. <laughs> clang, clang, clang. Right. <laughs> just like Joseph's furry isn't an owl. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Thank you, Austin. <laughs> oh, I mean. <clears throat> keep going, Grant. <laughs> Anyways, it's from um, a book. It's, honestly, this book's a little bit of a puff piece. It was uh, Jerry Lee Lewis, as told by Jerry or whatever. Oh, uh, okay. It was like an interview book. I did get some good information from it, but there was plenty of times where I'm like, bullshit, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anyways, he was still a boy then. One day when he was nine or ten, he stood on the levee before, beside his mother and his father as one more party boat pushed against the current. Well-dressed people laughing on deck. Sage in the middle of the Black River. They raise their glasses in a mocking toast to the family ashore. They tip their mint julep at us. Tipped him up, he says. Gross. Smiled the faintest bit to prove how little it matters to him after so much time. But it mattered to the man and woman beside him. His daddy was indestructible then. Gaunt, six foot four, with big, powerful hands that could squeeze weaker men to their knees. And a face oh. that seemed drawn Hot. only in straight lines, like Dick Tracy in the funny papers. As the drunken revelers just, just like him. lifted their glasses of bourbon high in the air, Elmo Kid Lewis pulled the boy up to his hip. Don't worry, son, Daddy told me. That was it. Don't worry, son. <laughs> 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 nice. That'll be you up there someday. That'll be you. He does not know if his daddy meant it would be him up there with the rich folks and the high and mighty, or it would be his songs they played as the boat passed by. I think maybe, he says, it was both. Oh. Hell yeah. Uh, the mint julep is such an overrated cocktail. Yeah, it's really not good. It's fucking good. gross. Anyways, Jerry Lee Lewis, a.k.a. The Killer, was born on September 29th, 1935 in Faraday, Louisiana. He grew up on a in an impoverished farming family. And he, by the way, he didn't die until October 28th, 2022. 2022? Yeah. Jerry Lee Lewis? Yes. So he's like, what, 90? Something? He's like 78 or something. Something I don't know. I don't fucking want to do that math right now. Nah, that's yeah, that old he farts. Was old. Farts were old farts. Yeah, seriously. Know, crazy. He was an American pianist, <laughs> singer, and songwriter, nicknamed Stinky. The He was described as rock and roll's first great wild man. His father Elmo was a poor farmer with a side hustle in moonshine. 
That was so good that the doctor who came to deliver Jerry Lee passed out drunk after Elmo offered his company a little nip just to be polite. <laughs> <laughs> was this after he delivered the baby? No. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, Mrs. Lee. Put it right out <laughs> So I won't catch it. <laughs> hold on. Let me ask my Siggy. <laughs> but it, this is this is literally bumfuck Louisiana, like right by the river. They all the houses were built on stilts. Yeah, the poorer people didn't have stilts, and so they would just have to clear out their house during flood season. Dude. Let the river flood their house. Come back <laughs> in, just hop back into their soggy house. The, yeah, sweep out the the dirt, or like the dirt once it turned back into dirt for mud, and then just put everything back in and keep going. Was, Why don't you just live somewhere else? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I like it here. We gotta make it work. <laughs> but yeah, apparently Jerry Lee was gonna. He was. Um, you know, his mom was just like, "Can we just move the house? <laughs> <laughs> Can Why we, don't we take the whole house and move it somewhere else?" <laughs> I don't want to be woken up every time it's high tide. Right? <laughs> yeah. But legend has it that Jerry Lee's dad is the one that delivered him because this, this, the, the doctor, doctor that came for the house call got too drunk. <laughs> Does that mean the doctor has to pay you if, <laughs> if you do their job? What are you uh, talking about, Joseph? This is America. <laughs> <laughs> His mother, Mamie. A God-fearing music lover was so deeply Pentecostal, she never cursed, wore makeup, or drank. Oh, boy. Getting into the Pentecostal words, y'all. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I'm getting flashbacks. Now, the family was devastated when Jerry's older brother was killed by a drunk driver when he was eight. Jerry Lee was four. He has, like, two memories of his older brother. Uh, it was to prove the first tragedy of many. Uh, he, he outlived so many offspring, Lives, <laughs> family members. I feel family. like we're going to get to that. <laughs> <laughs> but Jerry Lee quickly started showing who he was going to grow into. He was a terrible worker, mm-hmm. skipped school more than he went. He was constantly scaring his parents by hopping on moving trains, climbing on old suspension bridges. Hey, Daddy, watch this! <laughs> and, and walking the cables like a tightrope or stealing the farm's tractor for a joyride without knowing how to shift the gears. <laughs> Pretty sure he blew up that engine. Oh, come on, man. We all read Huckleberry Finn. That's what Southern little Southern boys do. <laughs> but he, like an oddly high percentage of his very incestuous family, poor, mostly uh, farming clan that have an incredible, quote unquote, God given knack for music. Like his dad played guitar and sang really well. His Third cousin slash uncle, twice removed, played guitar and sang really well. They just they just all played. They were all dirt poor, except for one uncle who did really well. <laughs> it's always a rich uncle somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> that bailed him out of jail a lot. Um, it's a good uncle. But so when Lewis turned just seven, his father mortgaged the house for two hundred and fifty dollars in order to buy him a piano. Which also lets you know how much that house was worth. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say it's really kind of fiscally irresponsible, but when you're living in a shack, <laughs> you can take out a mortgage on it. I mean, yeah. why not? Yeah. I'll trade you my house for a piano. I was like, well, that, seem, that doesn't seem fair. It's like, well, wait till you see the house. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's a one bedroom. Yeah. yeah. Just a bedroom. <laughs> so, hey, well, how about half a piano? <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you 44 keys, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Elmo recognized his son's potential. He also bought a pickup truck, put the piano on it, and the pair of them bust their way around the South. One legend goes, kill him dead, said his mother, and the killer's lifelong nickname stuck. Another legend around his nickname is when he was sent to the principal's office for strangling his seventh grade teacher with his own tie. (laughs) 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 He skipped so many uh, classes that he technically didn't graduate sixth grade. 
but he just went and sat in the seventh grade <laughs> class. And the teacher was like, what are you doing here, Jerry Lee? And he was like, I'm in seventh grade. He's like, no, you're not. You came to less than half of the school days last year. He's like, I'm in seventh grade, damn it. And he got and tried to take him out to the principal's office and he leapt on him, I grabbed his e. tie and wrapped it around his neck. <laughs> I'm a 4 E and sometimes C, bitch. If I kicked his ass, does that mean I'm in the eighth grade now? <laughs> <laughs> That's good for a whole grade skipping, right? Yeah. <laughs> so anyways, when he was in the principal's office, he met his lifelong friend and eventual touring manager, Calvin, who was also in for fighting. And that day, Calvin called him killer as he was leaving the principal's office, and apparently it stuck. A lot of people like to claim that they gave him his nickname, Killer, but Calvin's probably my favorite. I mean, what else do you have to claim to in that fucking shithole Louisiana <laughs> town? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he shot my dog, <laughs> called him killer. <laughs> <laughs> so Lewis went on to make his first recordings in 1952 when he was 17 at Cosimo Matassa's j and studio in New Orleans, Louisiana, and then early recordings in 1956 when he was 21 at Sun Records in Memphis, Tennessee. Crazy Arms sold 300,000 copies in the southern United States. Wow. But it was his 1957 hit, Whole Lot of Shaking Going On, that shot Lewis to worldwide fame. Again, he's 18 at this point, I think. It's incredible. Lewis had uh, a dozen gold records in rock and country. He won four Grammys, including a Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award and two Grammy Hall of Fame Awards. Lewis was inducted into the inaugural class of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1986. And his pioneering contribution to the genre was recognized by the Rockabilly Hall of Fame. He was also a member of the inaugural class inducted into the Memphis Music Hall of Fame. He was inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame in 2022. In 1989, his life was chronicled in the movie Great Balls of Fire, starring Dennis Quaid. And my balls. <laughs> was that your balls? <laughs> it did great. In 2003, Rolling Stone listed Suddenly. his box uh, set All Killer No Filler, the anthology, at number 242 on their list of the 500 greatest albums of all time. In two- 2004, they ranked him number 24 on their list of the 100 greatest artists of all time. Lewis is the last surviving member of Sun Records' Million Dollar Quartet in the al- uh, album class of 55, which included Johnny Cash, Carl Perkins, Roy Orbison, and Elvis Presley. All winners, dude. So all that to be said, I wanted to put that in there because the dude really was a badass when it came to music. A crazy son of a bitch every other aspect <laughs> of his life. Notorious for like not believing in rules or laws. He never... F- what did he always say? I never like to fuss with that paperwork stuff, you know, <laughs> like marriage licenses or taxes or, you know, tickets. <laughs> so he's getting a solid gold Cadillac repossessed at age 32, maybe, <laughs> maybe younger. <laughs> uh, music critic uh, Robert uh, Christigau said of Lewis, his drive, his timing, his offhand vocal power, his unmistakable boogie plus piano, and his absolute confidence in the face of the void make Jerry Lee the quintessential rock and roller. Anyways, to back up a little bit, on November 19th, 1949, Lewis made his first public performance of his career playing with a country and western band at a car dealership in Faraday. I wanted to put that in there just because it reminded me of our last sketch of our first show. (laughs) (laughs) Come to me and get the deal done. <laughs> That's probably like I think one of my favorite sketches I've ever written. <laughs> From the Toyota thon. Yeah, the Toyota, yeah, the, Toyota thon. Thon. the one where by the end of it we were all so exhausted that we just started <laughs> like yelling at each other. <laughs> oh my god, dude! Like <laughs> <laughs> also because I love that. The, what was the song? Um, oh, any way you want it. That's the way but you need the, it. Yeah. But the strange acoustic version. Yeah. It's like a blue It was like a weird yeah. cover. I love that song so much, and all of you hated it so, so much. So it's also important context to give is that we, everyone else at this table, everyone else in Trashville is wildly 
overly familiar with Journey and their oeuvre. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Jaime is apparently the only one of us who had never heard of Journey before. <laughs> I was like, hey, I just heard this great song. It kicks so much ass and I really want to use it for the sketch. We're all like, oh, okay. And he just starts playing any way you want it. That's the way you need it. But Journey, yeah. we're all like, what the fuck but are it's, you doing? But it's not even Journey. It's yeah, like, it it's so- like a bunch of college kids in their garage. <laughs> but he, Doing a cover of it. <laughs> doing a doing a, like a, a soft bluegrass cover. I wouldn't even call it bluegrass. No, it was people, like, we're talking like ukulele YouTube era cover. <laughs> like, yeah, actually, yeah, that's, actually, that's, yeah, that's very important. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Like, that's a good point. It, 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 I was flabbergasted. Like I was, <laughs> I was waiting for the flash mob. Yeah, <laughs> right. I was waiting for the joke. <laughs> like, I thought it was gonna like drop into some like hard fucking like rizzed up like club beat and <laughs> I was like, this is a, it's not doing it yet there's think, no joke i literally think somebody was playing like glass bottles on this thing <laughs> no they were <laughs> they were like the, they're doing the, the the thing in the jug like, <laughs> <laughs> so anyways just to paint that scene the hit of his set this performance was of r&b artist stick mcgee's drink and wine spody <laughs> What? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> Drinking wine. Spodiote. That's, that's going to be the next <laughs> fucking uh, sketch show that we do. We're going to call it a Spodiote. A Spodiote. A Spodiote. Yeah. Um, his mother seeing his talent, but fearing his uh, awesome cover of Drinking Wine Spodiote, enrolled him at the Southwest Bible Institute in uh, what, what is that? Wachahachi? Yeah, Texas. Uh, Wachahachi Spodiote. Yeah. So that he could sing evangelical songs exclusively. Got to get the devil out that boy. <laughs> when Lewis daringly played a boogie woogie rendition of My God is Real at a church assembly, it ended his association with the school the same night. Wow. <laughs> so just playing like a jumped up version of a fucking hymnal made these people kick him out. Yeah. That's Pentecostal for you. Yes, it is. <laughs> uh, so he played a black church song at a white church and they were like, none of that. Pretty much. Yeah. You don't do that at a spodiote. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like he's having fun. <laughs> Get him out of here. Uh, Perry- this is a spodiote, not a hoochie coochie. There's a difference. <laughs> Perry Green, then the president of the student body, related how during a talent show, Lewis played some, quote, worldly music. <laughs> Is that what they called it? <laughs> Is that the word for dirty? <laughs> <laughs> I love it so much. The next morning, the dean That's of the school. That's about as politically correct as you get back in those days. <laughs> Seriously. Though. The yeah. next morning, the dean of the school called Lewis and I don't Green. want to say N word. Uh, <laughs> worldly. worldly. <music. laughs> that could mean anything. <laughs> Covers, it covers all genres. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, it's basically just saying it sounds like he's been anywhere but our shit right. little town, and we hate it. It, yes, could exactly. be, it could be reggae. It could be Mongolian throat singing. We don't, we don't know. know. Oh, man. But it's not from this world. <laughs> or it could just America. Be, be emerging blues music from less than a mile away. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. Um, the next morning, the dean of the school called Lewis and Green into his office to expel them. Apparently, Jerry Lee just uh, disagreed with this. He's like, you can't expel me. I'll leave for a couple of weeks, but I'm coming back. <laughs> and never knew he's never going to come back, but just wanted the dean to like look through the gates for, <laughs> at that two-week marker. Just, just be like, oh, shit, the devil boy's coming back. <laughs> <laughs> I should have done that for my last job. I'll be oh, back. Oh, dude, that's good, yeah. I'll be back. I'll be back. <laughs> But instead, he went home and started playing at clubs in and around Faraday and Natchez. Uh, Natchez, Mississippi, by the way. Becoming part of the burgeoning new rock and roll sound and cutting his first demo recording uh, in New Orleans, like I was talking about earlier. Uh, Around 1955, he traveled to Nashville, where he played in clubs and attempted to build interest, but was turned down by the Grand Ole Opry, as he was already... At the Louisiana uh, Hayride Country Stage and Radio Show in Shreveport, which again, I just fucking love the Deep South from the 50s. That's just. <laughs> Would you not watch the fuck out of the. Hayride country stage and radio show. <laughs> I absolutely would. And then when the minstrel show part of it came on, I would turn it off. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Hosted by Walton Goggins. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, while he yeah. was there, he was just playing downtown. Anybody that let him play, a lot of people were very impressed with his piano playing, and he would try and strike up a conversation with him. 
got to a point where he was able to talk to some of, you know, like some record execs, managers, things like that. And all they ever said to him was like, you got a good voice, real good stage presence, but you need a guitar, boy. (laughs) That's all. Yeah. He never was able to make it in uh, Nashville. Hmm. Uh, I I bet you New Orleans and Nashville were fucking crazy in the 50s. Yeah, I bet New Orleans was for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Nashville, oh, I, I don't, that would have been so awesome. Two different worlds. Well, yeah, two, two different, different worlds, worlds but sure. crazy in their own ways. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I still, I, I don't know, it's probably wrong, but I, I mean, picture Nashville, Nashville in the 50s was pretty fucking crazy. Yeah, I picture it as like a more like Old West kind of like, there's not a lot of bars, but every bar in the, has a gunfight happening in it. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely more tumbleweeds. <laughs> yeah, than, yeah. Like, it's not a paved road. No. It's just the, yeah. a lot of dirt roads. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? But, um, from there, he went to Memphis, and like I was talking about earlier, his time at Sun Records did really, really well, um, playing with, like, Carl Perkins and backed up Johnny Cash in a track. His distinctive piano playing um, can be heard on Carl Perkins' tune, and, oh, Billy Lee Riley's Flying Saucers Rock and Roll. This probably doesn't mean anything to you guys. On December 4th of 1956, Elvis Presley dropped in on Phillips to pay a social visit while Perkins was in the studio cutting new tracks with Lewis backing him on piano. Johnny Cash was also there there watching Perkins. The four then started an impromptu jam session, and Phillips left the tape running. These recordings, almost half of which were gospel songs, were released on a CD as the Million Dollar Quartet. Tracks also included Elvis Presley's Don't Be Cruel, Paralyzed, Truck, Chuck Berry's Brown-Eyed Handsome Man, and Pat nice. Boone's Don't Forbid Me. Uh, Lewis's own singles, which uh, was billed as Jerry Lee Lewis and his pumping piano, advanced his career as a soloist during 1957 with such hits as A Whole Lot of Shaking Going On. Pumping um, those fingers. And Great Balls of Fire, his biggest Hold hit. Hold on. His pumping piano, mm-hmm. whole lot of shaking going uh-huh. on, mm-hmm. and, and great, great balls of fire. balls of fire. It's a devil music boy. <laughs> <laughs> Gets down right into your loins. <laughs> so it, well, I thank you for bringing that up because it brought him international fame and criticisms of the song, which prompted some radio stations to boycott them. Like this is too close to penis, and I don't like it. Uh, I mean, all all press is good press, you know. Mm-hmm. And it fits his like fucking hellion persona. Also, side note: how much how much do you think you could sell those copies of like fucking Carl Perkins, Johnny Cash, Elvis Presley, and Jerry Lee Lewis all playing together? Like, if you had originals of those, I mean, can you imagine what, what you could fucking now? sell that shit for, mm-hmm. dude? I'll tell you one thing, I wouldn't be doing this. I fucking know, man. <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't write another joke. <laughs> so, because this is just too taxing on you. Huh? <laughs> no, no, this is my escape from everything that is taxing. You're telling me I had some original copies of of this quartet. The yeah. way I, the way that I would handle my stress. <laughs> Don't ride my draft, dude. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'd go, I'd go. How much money do you think this cut is worth? Oh, easily a million. Today, if you had an original mm-hmm. and today, dude, it'd be millions. Yeah. yeah. You, find millions. The, you find the right buyer for real, though. Okay. Because I was thinking like oh. 50K. And I was like, oh, dude, no. Oh, no Are you going to retire no. with 50K? No, no, no. I'll retire with 50 million, though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like uh, a whole lot of shaking gone and was selected for permanent preservation in the National Recording Registry of the Library of Congress. Like, Congress, dude, and they do everything right. <laughs> the Library of Congress is awesome. I like libraries. I don't like yeah. Congress, so I'm 50-50 on this thing. <laughs> no, no, it's a library that Congress can go pick out books from. They don't. They don't. They don't. <laughs> they don't. It's there if for they them. wanted to. They <laughs> do, do, does this book have pictures? <laughs> Ted Cruz being like, do you have the new John Grisham? <laughs> That's really good. I want to read the Hardy Boys. <laughs> <laughs> they always get the case, and they always come out on top. M- Mr. Mr. President, again, you weren't technically a member of Congress. You were the the president. And, uh, I don't care. <laughs> Give me the book. <laughs> Aren't you just glad I'm reading? <laughs> you know, you can buy it for like sixteen dollars on Amazon. <laughs> I want to read it in the library. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, no jacking it in the computer room. 
No promises. <laughs> <laughs> the hard people. <laughs> you know, when you're the president, they just let you do anything. So, Congress has a library, like a like a physical library. Yeah. Can you go there? Yeah. Anyone can go there. Mm-hmm. That's cool. It's amazing. It was in. It was a national treasure. I haven't seen <laughs> national treasure. Yeah. That's something that's you would, a reference you would get. How dare you not remember national treasure why frame you, by frame, you fucking fool. Why do you, why do you make it sound that's, like I backstabbed you? But <laughs> <laughs> well, we saw that movie together. <laughs> that's, where, that's where Nicholas Cage came up with the idea to steal the Declaration <laughs> of Independence. I haven't seen that. Since I've been. <laughs> it's a fantastic He just grew movie. a third eye. <laughs> it's like, Ooh. You, what? <laughs> movie court. Movie, movie court. court. Oh, yeah. I miss movie court. Yeah, Coming to a too. podcast network near you. I Hopefully. I promise. We got, yeah, we got to get back on yeah. movie court. Yeah. Uh, behind the scenes, there are some uh, <laughs> wheels turning. We're, we're, we'll be good soon. Anyways, according to several firsthand sources, including Johnny Cash and Elvis Presley, actually, uh, Lewis, a devout Christian, was troubled by the, the sinful nature of his own material, which he believed was leading him and his audience to hell. The aspect of Lewis's character was depicted... It's like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, pretty much. I can't stop making it, but I'm turning evil. We must make more. <laughs> but instead of a potion, it's just booze. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> booze with speed pills dissolved in it. Yeah. yeah <laughs> just amphetamine and whiskey. Boo! <laughs> <laughs> when he's hung over, that's like the Christian side of him. Yeah. Oh, God. God. I'll do anything you want. Just make it stop. Yeah. <laughs> please. Oh, s- oh, sweet Pentecostal Jesus, please help me. Specifically the white Pentecostal Jesus. <laughs> Jim Beam and Percocets. <laughs> <laughs> I beseech thee. I'll handle all the snakes you want. <laughs> I won't go to the movies. Just, just make it stop. <laughs> So as part of his stage act, Lewis pounded the keys with his heel, kicked the piano bench aside and played standing, raked his hands up and down the keys, sat on the keyboard, stood on the piano, which was just fucking unheard of at the time. You know what I mean? This That's yeah. not how you play a piano. Exactly. It was it was quite austere in I mean, general. You know, to be like, to be completely real, that's like Gigi Allen shitting on stage and then slurping it up and spitting it back at people. Like exactly. That's like that level that of happened? holy... Th- oh, yeah, Gigi Allen's disgusting. Mm. Like He actually was going to uh, kill himself on stage. And you should have. Gross. Him. Dude, maybe I'll do a Gigi Allen episode. I was going to do one. But okay. Well, I called it. So <laughs> fuck you, Grant. I don't know. What to say. That's, that's more your your. Uh, uh, what world. if we do a collab? Ooh, Ooh. That's uh, fucking double date at the fucking Ooh. double team this murder. podcast. Fucking which front you want? You want front or back? <laughs> you don't tell me. I'm t- I'm getting my first pick. A front. All right, cool. Okay, I want it back. <laughs> <laughs> but apparently, he he did the uh, the the stool kicking thing by accident the first time, but it got a like a huge like cheer and everything like that. Yeah, and so he just kept doing it forever, you know, and that's. Something he always did. Really young, he learned that if he like shook his hair while he was playing really violently, girls would scream louder. So he grew his hair out longer <laughs> and shook it. Yeah, more. you know what I mean. Yeah. 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 Could you imagine the process of of realizing that? It's like what? for a guy who fought his way to seventh grade, right? Like he like like he's 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 playing. He's sweating a little bit. He's trying to get the hair out of his eyes, and he flicks it. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> he's like, huh? He flicks it twice. <laughs> yeah. He's like, he, oh wait, he starts flipping it around. <laughs> yeah, he just well, he invented this shit. It's crazy. Wow. But it's, wow. it's it's true, you know. Uh sorry, did, Jules, for, for, <laughs> for all that. <laughs> but we're not sorry for the trad wife stuff. Let's go. <laughs> and, like to take that a step further, there was this old show in 1957 called the Steve Allen show. And it's just like the very beginning of TV. Apparently, like the comedian Steve Allen? No, you're thinking of Steve Harvey. Uh, no. Am I? Go on, Are Grant. Tool Time Tim? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm thinking, That's Tim Allen. I'm thinking of Stephen Wright. Oh, yeah. That's I was thinking, thinking Tim of. Allen. I was like, hang on one, one second. Tim Allen is eternal. Yeah, but he did that on the show. <laughs> and apparently everybody... Oh, how, how. Ho. <laughs> <laughs> no, stage audience went crazy. It broadcasted. And then, like, preachers started going Nuts. Hell you know, yeah, dude. Trying their best to shut this the shit down. You know what I mean? It's always the church. 
Yeah. Always the church doesn't want you to have any fun. Yeah. There's too much gyrating. Right? <laughs> the preacher's just dabbing his own right. <laughs> sweaty brow. It's making me th- feel things in, <laughs> underneath my loin. Really making me regret that chastity bow. Right. <laughs> but in general... Hang on real quick. Yeah. Do you hear that the Pope came out saying like there's tons of F words in, in, in heaven? Well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Sorry, Grant, but we gotta, we gotta, we gotta zero in on this. Did he say f words? Uh, to, no. To, he, so he said it, I guess, in Italian, but it would uh, directly translated. It would. It's the Italian. It would. Like, it would. Wrist to thing. my understanding, it would roughly translate to f word a tree. <laughs> I don't f word a tree like. F word, uh-huh. add a tree at the end. So oh. just F tree? F tree. F tree. F tree. Uh, oh, like the state of F wordiness. Yes. I got you. Yeah. He said there's that in heaven. That's good. That's a mixed <laughs> bag. <laughs> it's all fake anyway. Who cares what the old Pope That's fucking so says? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> People give the Pope and they're like, I'm sorry, I don't want to do a Pope thing. But like, I, check out this oh fucking woke Pope. He's so fucking progressive. Fuck you. When you're not torturing people to death and like That's fucking a character like, right there. Woke Pope. Woke Pope. But like fucking, how woke can a Pope be? He's fucking head of the Catholic Church. It's an organization that hey man, launders trying. money and fucks kids. He's trying. Trying. Um, I misreported. He said that there's gay men in the seminaries and... Um, well, that's a very different statement. <laughs> Hold on. Yeah, that's a very different statement. <laughs> and on, sorry, you're telling me there's a lot of gay men in the same in the, in the seminary? You don't say. <laughs> People who are deeply like guilty and like have to like right. hold themselves away from like fulfilling their lives so they go into a fucking profession that mm-hmm. like forces them to be celibate. Yeah, there's probably some people who are closeted. <laughs> Good to have you back on, Joey. <laughs> we missed, we missed you. you. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> so Jerry Lee was sorry. I just had to bring that up. Larger. I just was so like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I heard that recently. I was like, no way. It seems me, like no. a good time to bring it up. <laughs> You're telling me there's gay men of the cloth? <laughs> yeah. News flash. <laughs> <laughs> Like he just got wind of it. Right. Can you believe it? Right. The Pope just right. found out. You know they're touching boys too, right? He's like, Fucker, who knew? Book to what? <laughs> so, Jerry Lee was larger than life. He didn't take shit from no one. Once Chuck Not Berry refused God. to go on before Lewis, so Jerry Lee decided he would finish his set by lighting his piano on fire. To show him up. <laughs> That's awesome. He he just took grain alcohol from his glass and poured it on the fire. That's what he's drinking. Yeah, so he and then lit a match. Well, I'm done drinking this. <laughs> just goes. Wasn't up. there a music video like that? <laughs> the fire department had to show up. The show was done. Like they had to show, <laughs> show down. He was a crazy. Who, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Chuck Berry's like, I was going to watch him pee after the show. What are you doing? It. <laughs> His live shows were... just straight were, drinking gasoline. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jesus. His live shows were simply unmatched at the time, and he quickly became a legend in an infamous kind of way. Rumors of him selling his soul to the devil, being possessed, or being a vampire were common. One of my That's favorites awesome. is that he was, in fact, a vampire that was old enough to have fought for the Civil War Sorry, fought that's for the South <laughs> in the Civil that's War. A, that's a bold claim. <laughs> Not only is he a vampire, he's a racist vampire. Yeah. 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 Confederate, <laughs> Count Confederate. Count Confederate. Yeah. <laughs> That's the ghost stories they told. I found to whip your slaves. (laughs) Rebel yell. (laughs) I want to suck your slaves. Oh my God. Rumors or not, Jerry Lee Lewis was a fucking maniac. And this might be my favorite story. I swear, I thought you were going to be like, rumors or not, he was definitely a vampire. <laughs> I actually I went to the the Library of Congress and I saw, pulled up some old photos of Civil War. Uh, yeah, he's there now. Um, instead of Nick Cage, yeah, yeah. instead and of Nick transforming Cage. into a bat, he transforms into a whip. <laughs> <laughs> 
Jesus Christ. <laughs> Use me. <laughs> oh. oh, God. <laughs> You're going to say a possum with a Confederate flag <laughs> shirt on. <laughs> Why would you think yeah, that's better? better. <laughs> right. that, I mean, it's kind of a bad. It's still an animal. Right. Right. Just, <laughs> just a possum with a Confederate flag <laughs> on its neck. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> no, I was thinking bat and the, uh, the baseball. Form, you know, but okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah, different tools. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wait, do you think regular vampires turn into bats no. like Louisville no. sluggers? No, I do no. love the idea that <laughs> poof. I, kunk, 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 kunk. I, I, I think I think there was like a Looney Tunes or some oh, kind of okay, that, kind of yeah. bit where like a vampire turned into a a baseball there bat was. with That's wings. Good. Yeah. It feels like WB. I yeah. think it was. Yeah. yeah. So anyways, oh. this is one of my favorite stories in this. <laughs> Check it out. In the early hours of November 22nd, 1976, Harold Lloyd, uh, Elvis's and the uh, presiding guard on duty at Graceland, was greeted by an unexpected visitor, Jerry Lee Lewis. <laughs> Jerry Lee, accompanied with his wife at the time, pulled up to the mansion's front gate in his new Rolls Royce Silver Shadow. He asked Lloyd if he could see Elvis. Hang on, did he- Silver it, shadow, yeah, oh, like it's damn. it's like the Ford Escalade, or like that's the name of the car, or he named the car. Oh no, no, that's that's that type of Rolls Royce. Okay, it oh, was like uh, their yeah. Uh, well, because it was they, like their luxury speed car. It was like a four door speed car. I was speed really hoping kind of that thing. like they're dope. <laughs> that he just called it Very silver expensive. shadow. <laughs> well, it was one of those times too where like Rolls Royce made uh, I think they were called the Phantoms or the Wraiths ah, or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. The Phantom or Wraith, but they only made like what a couple hundred of them. That was a time when like car manufacturers yeah. would literally just do a limited run on a on a car. Like they make a couple hundred, or they'd make like ten super expensive fucking like silver shadows. Yeah. And if you had one, it was just like. Fucking Shangri La in a car. So not helping the whole vampire, right? Right. right? So, but again, this is seventy six. So he is fucking loaded. Yeah. Just so you know, he asked Lloyd if he could see Elvis, but was told that the king was asleep. Lewis politely oh, wake his ass up. <laughs> 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 he said, Stuffing an egg McMuffin in his face. Lewis, oh, wake him up. <laughs> Lewis politely thanked Lloyd and drove away without incident. Later that morning at 9.30 a.m., Lewis flipped his Rolls Royce while rounding the corner at Peterson Lake and Power Road in Collierville. Shit! (laughs) (laughs) The police report on the incident stated that the breathalyzer test yielded negligible results, but that Lewis was obviously tanked on something and that he was charged with driving while intoxicated. God damn it, where was that breathalyzer (laughs) test? (laughs) (laughs) He's so drunk he broke the breathalyzer. (laughs) It's all the charge. He was charged with driving while intoxicated, reckless driving, and driving without a license. <laughs> That's he a truck. Rolls dude. Royce just a few weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, after the infraction, Lewis most likely returned to his home to rest. On November 23rd, God, am I hungover? 1976, <laughs> less than 12 hours later, he was holding court at The Vapors, one of his favorite Memphis night spots. For reasons that are still debated, Lewis decided to leave the Vapors at about 2.30 a.m. The Vapors or the Vampers? Vapors. Oh, sorry. Precisely at 2.50 a.m. Drinking what looked like red wine. Almost 24 (laughs) hours later, to the minute, he again pulled up to Graceland, this time in a new Lincoln Continental. (laughs) (laughs) What a baller, dude. I got it on sale. (laughs) (laughs) It's just a brick in the passenger side. (laughs) The car wasn't the only thing that had changed from the night before. Lewis's manner was markedly different. He was armed, angry, and obviously inebriated. A dangerous combination for a man mere mere mortals called killer. He was out of his mind, man, recalls Lloyd. He was screaming, hollering, and cussing. Hang on, real quick. You said he, he like, overturned to the Rolls Royce, right? Yeah. How, mu- how much time elapsed from him leaving Graceland to... Him coming back to Graceland in a new car? No, the first one. When he went to Graceland and yeah. he said you flipped his car, uh-huh. was it, like, directly, like, 10 minutes afterwards? Is that what he said? Uh, it was, like, he was there 2 in the morning, and then he flipped his Rolls Royce... A little after that, yeah. So probably just a few miles down the road, honestly. And then the police picked him up, arrested him, and then the next day... So he's hammered yeah. the first time, obviously. Uh-huh. 
Next uh, day, he buys a Lincoln Continental. I want to see Elvis. <laughs> Certainly, it wasn't the alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite thing is... Like, Elvis was probably wide awake on fucking, like, pills. At this time, Elvis actually had become a bit of a recluse. This is his fat face. And he was mm. known for sitting in his office that was adjacent to his master bedroom that had all of the CCT footage on just a yeah. panel of television screens. He got kind of Howard Hughesy. Yeah, he did, actually, yeah. So yeah. he was definitely watching the whole thing. Yeah. I'm tell him I'm asleep. Yeah, exactly. You know what's funny is Elvis was probably like, I bet he's here to kill me. And then, like, 24 <laughs> hours later, he was like, I was right. Yeah, so within 24 hours, he clearly did not stop drinking and doing speed, but he bought a Lincoln Continental, <laughs> went to his favorite bar, and uh, from Probably one of the books I read, well, apparently he didn't like to drink champagne, but somebody brought in a case of really nice champagne. So he said, I'll make an exception for it. So he leaves the bar with a full bottle of champagne uncorked, just drinking it from the neck on the way back out to Graceland. God, I grew up in the wrong era. He tried to, <laughs> he thought the window was down as he was pulling up to Graceland. What a beautiful time in America. <laughs> <laughs> so he finished his bottle of champagne, thought the passenger side window was down and tried to chuck it out the window as he's pulling up to oh, drive no. for Graceland. Who does he Sh- hit? Shattered the passenger side window, which was fully up, and the bottle of champagne. <laughs> it ricocheted back and cut his nose. Oh. So Oh my god. He showed up fucked up, bleeding, and holding a loaded pistol. <laughs> Reeking of champagne. <laughs> so, anyways, <laughs> the car salesman probably had a hoot selling yeah. that car oh, yeah. to him. Oh well, my god, probably. Actually, yeah. Yeah. Can I, uh, He's just had, drunk as hell can with I just a whole get bunch a, of cash. Uh, in hand. Look at your license plate. I'm Jerry Lee Lewis. <laughs> All right. Well, just, you are Jerry Lee and Lewis. Just flops, I'm here. like, you know, $3,500 in cash on the thing. Right. Like, All right, Mr. Lewis, here you go. You know? yeah. <laughs> Give me your newest Lincoln. And yeah. they're like, Okay. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> what am I going to do? Tell Jerry Lee Lewis no? He's very clearly drunk. <laughs> he will shoot me. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. He definitely flashed his gun yeah. in the same. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to yeah, want that us, Lincoln uh, today. Yeah, give us a good Jerry Lee Lewis. It's that top paragraph there. <clears throat> so he pulls up to the gate, actually hits the gate, and Lloyd, <laughs> and the security guard, <laughs> Lloyd, is like, what are you doing here? Get on the goddamn phone. I know you got an intercom system. Call up there and tell Elvis I want to visit with him. Who the hell does he think he is? Tell him the killer's here to see him. <laughs> Lloyd panicked. I just put up my hands up in the air and said, okay, okay, Jerry, just take it easy. Lloyd retreated to the guard room and picked up the house phone. One of the boys answered and Lloyd appraised him of the situation. Lloyd was advised to call the cops and wasted no time in doing so. Moments later, Elvis himself rang down to the guard booth. Lloyd recalls their conversation precisely. Elvis is on the line, and he said, "What, what, what, what?" See, he used to stutter a lot when he got upset. What, 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 what the hell's going on down there, Harold? I said, "Well, Jerry Lee Lewis is sitting in his car down here outside the gate, waving a Derringer pistol and raising hell." Elvis he says said, he wants to kill you. What, what, <laughs> what's that goddamn guy want? I said. He's demanded to come up and see Elvis, he said. Oh, I, I, I don't want to talk to that crazy son of a bitch. <laughs> Hell no. I don't want to talk to him. I'll come down there and kill him. Y'all call the cops, Harold. I told him I already did, and he said, good. And when they got there, uh, and when they get there, tell him to lock his butt up and throw the goddamn key away, okay? Thank you, Harold. <laughs> Elvis, leave me alone. Oh, and thank you. <laughs> also, he said, I love lock up his butt. And throw the goddamn key away. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't going to cuss in the first half of the sentence. I'm going to cuss in the second half. <laughs> Officer uh, Billy J. Kirkpatrick was the first to arrive on the scene. Billy J. Kirkpatrick? Uh-huh. What a name. Yeah. Though Lewis was still seated in his car, Kirkpatrick knew he was armed and approached with caution. The Lincoln's sole occupant sat staring out the front window. When the police got... To open the driver's side window, they found that the man was Jerry Lee Lewis. Balanced on his knee was a chrome-plated, over-under-style 38 caliber Derringer pistol. Kirkpatrick ordered him out of the car, but Lewis would not comply. Kirkpatrick had to pull him out of the car, remembers Lloyd. He told him to keep his hands on the steering wheel where he could see him. Jerry said he just wanted to see Elvis, but Kirkpatrick told him to shut up. Now, Jerry... <laughs> He had to hide his. He tried to hide his pistol by putting it in between his knee and the door. But when Kirkpatrick <laughs> opened the door, the damn gun fell out on the floorboard. 
<laughs> Oops. <laughs> Don't know how that got there. <laughs> Kirkpatrick picked up the gun and it was cocked and loaded. Damn. Mr. Lewis was extremely unstable on his feet. His speech was slurred and his breath smelled of alcohol. Mr. Lewis was appraised of his rights and was arrested for carrying a pistol and being drunk at a public place. <laughs> That's it. Uh, the police report states <laughs> Not that- another Dewey? <laughs> <laughs> I know! The, the police report you states- You can't be tried for the same crime twice. <laughs> Legally, we can't give him another Dewey until it's been uh, two more days. Yeah. It's With, a Memphis style. It's within the 24-hour period. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, guys can't. The, the police report states that on closer inspection, Kirkpatrick noticed that the front passenger window of Lewis's car was smashed in. The accounts for the deep gash, which accounts for the deep gash on Lewis's nose obvious from the mugshot which is a pretty dope mugshot by the way according to Kirkpatrick's report the injury was sustained from broken glass resulting from attempting to jettison an empty champagne bottle through a close window of his 76 Lincoln Kirkpatrick and four other officers took Lewis away immediately but Lloyd would receive another visitor before night's end he explains when the record came down and towed Jerry's car away at approximately 4 a.m. They hadn't much more. They hadn't much more than gotten out of sight when another car comes a flying up the driveway. Two guys got out. I recognize one of them as Jerry Lee's dad. <laughs> oh, his dad? <laughs> it's Elmo. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> this is Lloyd again. Elmo says, "Let go of my son." He was laughing, saying, "Ha ha ha! Ain't this some crap, man?" <laughs> I just got word that they've taken my son to jail. <laughs> this guy with me here, he just got me out of Hirondo jail. I just got out and Jerry gone, <laughs> done gone ahead. <laughs> so Elmo just got out of jail and he comes to go get Jerry who had just been taken to jail. <laughs> That's the Lewis family for you. <laughs> sure enough, Elmo Lewis, age 78. Uh, was arrested at 7.30 p.m. on the 21st for speeding and driving while intoxicated. He spent two nights in jail and failed to make his court appearance scheduled for the morning of the 23rd. <laughs> Damn, like father, like son, dude. Like, <laughs> fucking whole ha- family full of hellions. When Elvis died, Jerry Lee was quoted as... Oh, yeah. you, got good, you got a good Jerry Lee going, so it's right there at the top. I was glad, man. Just another one out of the way. I mean, Elvis this, Elvis that. What the shit did Elvis do other than take dope that I couldn't get a hold of? Oh, hell yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Now, Damn, dude. Let's talk about his uh, quite sweet and very tame love life. Lewis was married seven times. Seven? (laughs) Including bigamous marriages and a marriage with his underage cousin. Uh, What's that first word? Bigamous? Bigamous. That's bigamous. Like uh, uh, he married two people. He married one person while he was still married to another, and one fab person. That was a bigamous. Yeah, <laughs> 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 no, that was great. <laughs> and I loved it. Great. <laughs> Gold, Gold, but I love it. <laughs> Gold star joke. <laughs> <That's>, uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Why is that not in the English language? <laughs> That's not, there should be a word. Like, well, he married a fat lady, so uh, we got a word for that now. It's a big abyss. It's a big abyss. Oh, my God. He had six children during his marriages, by the way. Okay. Six children, so, seven wives. When Jerry Lee Lewis was 16, he married Dorothy Barton, the daughter of a preacher. The union lasted from February of 1952 to October of 1953. Lewis's second marriage to Sally Jane Mitchum in September of 53, which, by the way, October. Yeah, September, I was doing the calendar yeah, math. There you go. Was of dubious validity because it occurred 23 days before his divorce from Barton was final. They had two children, Jerry Lee Lewis Jr. and Ronnie Guy Lewis. After four <laughs> years, he filed for divorce in October of 1957. Jerry Lee Lewis Jr. died in 1973 at the age of 19 when the Jeep he was driving flipped. Ooh. So, so the, the, it Lewis, runs deep the Lewis. Lewis is not yeah. really good with the vehicles. Nah. Yeah. Now, his most infamous move that I'm sure at least one of y'all know about at the table is his third marriage. It was to 13-year-old Myra Gale Brown, <sighs> his first cousin once removed. Well, once removed. What's that mean? As cousin by marriage. 
Um, mm-hmm. So it's not a blood first cousin, but still, I mean, come on. That's not as bad. I'm more tore up over the fact that she's 13. <laughs> I mean, like, he obviously saw her at, like, a family reunion, and he's like, dream weaver. <laughs> he's like, I better lock her down before she develops, because all the boys going to want some. He, he would, like, pick her up from middle Band school. Oh. <laughs> Seventh grade, my guy. He'd pick her up right. from school Damn. and then take her home. And, like, all the other, like, all of her girlfriends and stuff were like, oh, my God, Jerry Lee Lewis is your cousin. Eddie's picking you up from school. And he was just uh, putting in his time. Anyways, hey, you, I think they call that grooming now. You you, yeah. uh, you got something in your braces. <laughs> oh, don't. Damn it, Austin. No. <laughs> end, of, end of statement. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's put, a, let's put a real strong period. <laughs> let's put a real strong period on that. And I, I did. And I don't think she's had one yet. Anyways, here we go. Oh! <laughs> nice. Come nice. on. Beep, beep, beep. The bar. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> so did he marry her at thirteen? Uh-huh. Damn, it was a different time during a nineteen. He didn't even take time to groom during a nineteen fifty eight <laughs> British tour where Ray he didn't Barry, like paperwork, a <laughs> news agency reporter at London's Heathrow Airport, he was the only journalist present, learned about Lewis's third wife. Though Lewis, who is twenty two year old, twenty two years old at the time, claimed that she was actually fifteen. He did some digging. <laughs> it's so bad when you have to lie to make it better and it still sounds so bad. <laughs> <laughs> she said she was 12. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Hang on. Don't, don't the courts check any something? Don't they like, hey, can oh, I see yeah. an ID? That's, like, that's, a, that's a really good question. So <laughs> get this shit. <laughs> While Myra was in school, Mm-hmm. He got another one of his cousins to pretend to be Myra mm. to go to court or uh, 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 like county hall or whatever. The county clerk. And sign, there. thank you, the county clerk, and sign the marriage document. She forged Myra's signature because <laughs> oh. <laughs> she was 18. <laughs> God damn. I'm off the Lewis train, dude. Yeah. Oh. I know, right? It's Man. fucked up. Right up until that point, I was like, this guy's just having fun. She's yeah. just telling all her girlfriends, I'm getting married right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? No, I'm serious. Right, right now. now. Yeah. I'm really stressed about this math grade, the math <laughs> test. It's like, oh, yeah? I'm getting married. I got, I'm stressed for a wedding. Yeah, I got cold feet. I'm worried if I'm going to go through with it or yeah. not. Yeah, I got way, a homeroom, and I'm going to get railed by my cousin. That Dennis Quaid movie, this whole like scene of him marrying his 13-year-old cousin, apparently, I haven't seen it. I've just heard a lot about it doing all this research. Yeah. But she's like packing up her dollhouse and leaving her parents' house with Jerry Lee waiting in the car out God front. Damn. <laughs> I hope they play really romantic music while that scene is happening. <laughs> so fucked up. Jesus Christ. So, uh, he goes over to the UK for a tour. They find out about the marriage, right? Uh, the publicity caused an uproar, and the tour was canceled after only three concerts. This ruined him. He went from making 10 grand a night in 57. By, or in 58, by the way. 10 grand a night in 1958. That's insane. Jesus. To being forced to go back to the States where he was blacklisted on all American radio stations. He couldn't book any tours. Wow, uh, I'm kind of surprised 50s America cared that much. Yeah. That's, that's, that's kind of great. Kinda surprising, uh, yeah. yeah. His divorce from Jane Mitchum was not finalized before the ceremony took place, so he remarried Brown on June 4th of 1958. So his his solution to this was to actually fix the legality of him marrying his 13 year old cousin yeah he missed the point <laughs> entirely oh, I, can, I hear what the people are saying <laughs> oh you guys are mad i'll fix it <laughs> they had two children steve allen lewis and phoebe allen lewis brown was only 14 when their first son was born Oh, uh, damn it, man. Uh, in 1962, Steve Allen Lewis drowned in a swimming pool accident at the age of three. That actually had, it was just a freak accident. Like, seriously, there was no wrongdoing in, in, in any part. She was actually doing dishes, thought the housekeeper was watching after the three year olds. They didn't even 
have the pool filled. It just a lot of rain came in Dude. the night before, and there was enough water to drown the kids. So, like, question? No, it really had nothing to do with her being fourteen or bad. <laughs> no, the three year old just figured out how old his mom actually was, <laughs> saw where his life was going, and jumped into the pool. <laughs> I thought marriage was my first cousin. Her age was a baker's dozen. <laughs> it's been brewing in mind. That's awesome. Yay! That's awesome. Okay. Uh, uh, that Quick question. Good. Maybe uh-huh. uh, maybe it, this is said, maybe not. But does he not believe in premarital sex? He does not, actually. We went to court. That's why he married his I got first no wife. A good okay. disco race says, I'm fucking crazy. <laughs> he married the preacher's daughter because he wanted to fuck her. 100%. Nice. Oh. So he married his cousin. His 13, like in his twisted brain, it's like, as long right. as I'm it's, married, we could do then it's thing. totally yeah. okay. Yeah. Okay. I know, right? I'm going to do a whole Jerry Lewis album. Based <laughs> off <of> this. <laughs> <laughs> Coming to our merch page. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But here's the fucked up thing. Uh, enough, sure a little bit of time had passed. <laughs> There's something more fucked up? <laughs> a little bit. Not more fucked up, but just, it's just strange. He's a weird guy. But his his three-year-old, excuse me, dies. Jerry Lewis went back to the UK a week after his son died. It was somehow much better received. Uh, it wasn't anywhere near the level of fame he had prior. Um. But I think it was like, oh, your kid died. We're not going to keep hounding you about the fact that you married your 13-year-old cousin, I guess. I guess he can bang a 13-year-old as long as your son dies. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the moral of the story I was thinking we were going to come to, but... Well, hang on. So, like, they get married at 13. She pops out the kid at 14. Uh-huh. He dies at 3, so she's She's 17, 17. now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so some time has passed. Some time has okay. passed. Okay. Yeah, the mom died down. The, the, not, not a lot of heat. The, the heat has simmered down. Yeah, yeah. the heat has simmered down. Right. Yeah. But in 19- the mom looked in that pool and was like, "Shit!" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, in ni- but in 1970, Brown filed for divorce on the grounds of adultery <clears throat> and abuse, stating that she had been subject to every type of physical and mental abuse imaginable. Oh wow. boy, man, I know. But anyways, backtracking just a little bit. All of this bullshit goes down. He's now playing dives uh, all over the country to try and string together a couple of hundred bucks over a week or so. Oh, he wasn't saving money? He, <laughs> 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 he wasn't financially responsible? <laughs> What's the hell you say? <laughs> What's his 13-year-old uh, wife's name? Uh, Myra. Man, I, I kind of feel for her because... I definitely feel for her. Well, <laughs> only, yeah, man. Only kind of. That's not a hot take. <laughs> <laughs> she lost her no. son at 17. <laughs> I'm with, I'm thinking before, like, as they're dating, I guess, at some point, at 13, like, leading up to the marriage, he's making hand over fist. He's probably buying whatever the fuck oh, he sure. wants, whenever he wants. And then because of that marriage... His life is fucking tanking, mm-hmm. and he's probably taking it out all on her whenever probably. he can, and yeah. whatever way he can. Yeah. And she probably doesn't have any friends because all of her friends are, I don't know, in school. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? She's all by herself. Yeah. She's like, I got to go to school today. School? <laughs> school ain't taught me nothing. Right. You know he said that at least once a day. Yeah. <laughs> he dropped out in like eighth grade, I think. Yeah. 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 Anyways, uh, he was dead <laughs> well, in the water. They kicked him out more so. They were like, don't ever That's fucking true. come back. Don't come back. Yeah, no, he was dead in the water for about a decade. He and his band piled into a car and roamed all over the country playing anywhere they could and often getting into fights with people having an issue with Jerry Lee's lifestyle. They never let him drive. One night, a guy <laughs> called him a son of a bitch while he was performing. Jerry Lee stopped the song and said, why don't you come say that to my face? <laughs> When the guy climbed on stage, Jerry Lee grabbed. <laughs> you bet your ass I will. Jerry Lee grabbed the mic stand and hit him in the forehead with the heavy rounded base of it. Yes. Honestly, fuck yeah. <laughs> the dude went flying off stage. I think he, what did it say? He landed like two tables back or Jesus. something. Jesus. Like just full blown. Just, he hit the just shit out of that's, called, okay. that's called fucking around and finding out. Yeah. <laughs> he just go back to playing. Yeah. Dude, he had that. I anger. just hit that man in the head. 
Bottles look so very in my happy day. <laughs> he had that anger in the chamber. He was like, yeah, come yeah. up here and say it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I broke his teeth and check, please. Goodness gracious, I'm fucking crazy. <laughs> so, and for just uh, three easy payments of $9.99, you can get a copy of Austin singing these fantastic hits. We will send it straight. In the mail to you. Uh, <laughs> uh, God, and then we could have a Christmas album too. Hell yeah! <laughs> so he said in, a, in an interview later in life that that kind of thing happened all the time. <laughs> <laughs> These folks just wanted to see if they could take on. Oh the no, I saw people all the time. Is that crazy? <laughs> These folks just wanted to see if they could take on the killer. <laughs> so he's going on a fight club tour, not necessarily a fucking performance. <laughs> and that it was better that if he handled it because Calvin from earlier, his road manager, according to Jerry Lee, was real quick with a knife. So basically, if Jerry Lee... <laughs> I'm doing you a favor. Beat the <laughs> shit out of him, that's I cracked your skulls a favor. <laughs> that's Calvin would kill you. <laughs> You're welcome. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> Calvin's just polishing the snaps like one day he'll slip up. Yeah. Yeah. Why wasn't Calvin the killer? <laughs> Jesus. So during this time of road dogging it, Jerry Lee developed a pretty good speed and booze habit. Road dogging? Uh huh. That's a term? Road dogging it, yeah. Touring. Yeah. Okay. Just shitty tours. You know, yeah. you're, you're yeah. piled into a four door, you know, just piece of shit. Right. You're smelling for... each other's farts. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Going from shitty bar to shitty club to shitty bar. <laughs> The green room's just like a fucking bathroom. With like- <laughs> the windows are down yeah. the whole time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he developed a pretty good speed and booze habit, but he also reintroduced himself as a country singer. Here we go. And the hit started coming again. Between 1968 and 1977, he put 17 top 10 hits on the country charts. 17? <sighs> the fame and the money came back in a rush. Fuck. As long as his fourth wife, Jared Elizabeth Gunn Pate, from 71 to 82, kept her damn hands off of it. And the IRS. <laughs> <laughs> so The IRS always comes knocking. <laughs> so he was stashing his cash in shoeboxes. And for now, smart. he was back on top. Very smart. <laughs> they, smart. <laughs> smart bearing in the backyard. <laughs> they She'll the- never find It's like, oh, that freshly dug up hole over there. <laughs> yeah. I'll find it later when you leave. So they hit the road again just as hard, but this time to larger and larger crowds. More and more money per night. And more drugs, baby! Better drugs, too. Yep. And it started out simply with some pills dissolved in a glass of whiskey while he was on stage. But it was a bit That's of a blur. a hell of a way to do it. Drugs, <laughs> <Yeah>. seriously. <laughs> got a crush that like, can't snort it. I got a crush it and just sip on it. Uh-huh. And then it became a bit of a blur. Crisscrossing across the country, going to Europe on late night shows, some acting sprinkled in. Seriously, he was in like some... Uh, he was in a movie. He was in several different television shows that were happening around the time. Probably he, huh? Yeah, that kind of shit, yeah. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so he bought a jet and then a faster jet. <laughs> <laughs> His dad... <laughs> As he claimed, I want to give him. I want to give him a hell yeah so bad. <laughs> I, I, I can't do it anymore. So the first is jet that, apparently was really awesome. Hang like on, it was I, decked out, had a really dope bar. Would uh, you party with him? Because I think I want to. Fuck par- yeah, I want to yeah. party with which yes. one night. Just yes. one, one night, night. One night. And I one would, day more like probably. If if the yeah, underage it's hookers twenty four hour bend there for sure. Yeah. If the underage hookers start floating in, I'm gonna just just ease on back. You know. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> Yeah, if Epstein would have been there. Like, right. oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Epstein's dad. <laughs> Jesus. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking of showing my son the family business. <laughs> so, it really is a family business. Speaking of dad, Jerry Lee's dad, Elmo, was happily tagging along, abusing <laughs> hotel room service, and uh, one time he drunkenly yeah. stole a limo on the tarmac. <laughs> and crashed it a mile down the road. He slipped into the back and convinced the cops that he was just sitting there waiting for his son, the famous Jerry Lee Lewis, to get in. And some damn fool stole it and took off with, took off with it, with him inside. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sure I, I've been drunk in the back this whole time. I was napping back here and some <laughs> crazy guy took this limo. I just woke up. I'm as confused as you are. Elmo did cocaine off a of hooker's tits. <laughs> And he totally got away with it, by the way. Uh, But in 1981, his speed habit caught up with him. The doctors gave him a 50-50 chance to live. (laughs) Came to a dead stop. 
and had to <laughs> nice and had to remove a portion of his stomach. Oh, well, later, damn. He performed a televised special on ABC celebrating his 25-year career. Soon after, the IRS raided his house for a tax evasion to find cocaine and weed as well as what they were looking for. Now And now, his fourth wife was about to become his fourth ex and probably would have bankrupted until she mysteriously turns up dead. Oh. Face, face down in the pool with no witnesses at the home of a friend with whom she was staying. A f- several weeks before divorce proceedings could be finalized. They had one daughter, Lori Lee Lewis. Jerry Lee claimed that he was nowhere near her the night of the incident and that they weren't even living together for the last few years. But a longtime friend, Mary Catherine or KK Jones of San Antonio, Texas, testified in court during Lewis's income tax invasion trial that Pate had lived with Lewis from 1980 to 1983. So stories aren't lining up. She didn't die in Jerry Lee's pool, but who knows? You know, she probably would have bankrupted him. Yeah. Mm. So the Shoulders idea is that he, he killed her and then took her to a friend's house and dumped I'm, the body in a pool? That could be the case. Or I that he went to the friend's house when she wasn't there? Was the friend there who found no, her? No, actually, so the fourth wife was home alone and decided to go swimming according to allegedly allegedly supposedly to go swimming but she was the only one in the house when that happened mm. the owner of the house their mutual friend came home to find her mm. so there was a, a good chunk of time well hold on how old was his fourth wife because she might have still been taking swimming lessons at the y <laughs> <laughs> she was a lot taking up two goddamn lanes <laughs> are you fucking kidding me <laughs> So just a year later, he married Sean Michelle Stevens, a cocktail server from Michigan, roughly half his age. They married in his backyard overlooking his piano-shaped pool, both in white. However, the honeymoon phase didn't last too long for Jerry Lee this go-around. Sean figured out pretty quick that at this point in his life, Jerry Lee liked to drink a lot. He was also now shooting speed directly into his stomach. Oh, my God. His half a stomach? Yeah. Oh, my God, you can do dude. That? Apparently, you can. Uh, oh, oh, as far as, like, just in general? Yes. It's... I guess technically... I don't advise it. All listeners, please don't do this. No. But if you shoot a drug directly into your stomach intravenously, you're going to get a really quick hit of it through the bloodstream, but then your stomach's going to absorb the rest of it. And it's going to be like a slow release kind of a thing. I know you mean like, so you get that immediate your abdomen or like you, like you're putting the needle like into the, your stomach, stomach, you're planning on hitting the stomach. That's, That's wild. The yeah. what? That is the goal. I didn't know you could do that. Yeah, so you get the immediate pick me up and then it'll last for depending on what you're taking, but it lasts for hours longer than just shooting it straight into a vein. It goes straight to your brain. And he di- he's doing this to his half stomach. Uh-huh. Yeah. Dude, mur- murder, murder, drug tip. Don't pop veins. Don't do it. Just if you're going to do <laughs> drugs, seriously, don't don't shoot. Just put it in your ass. It's fine. Yeah, I would much rather you guys boof something than shoot it. Please. Just yeah. Avoid needles. Seriously, just avoid needles. Anyways. Don't do drugs. <laughs> oh, or yeah, you can, I mean, you could also that's do that, better. I guess. That's best. Yeah. That's if best. you want to be a fucking loser. <laughs> don't do <laughs> illegal substances. Nah. Just. Just do the, the fun ones, like mushrooms and Just stuff. Just stick like with that. the fun, right. kind of right. natural ones. If it so don't right. come out of the ground, it don't go into the body. Don't go in the brown. That's right. If it don't come out the brown, don't put it in the brown. Anyways. Also, yeah. don't put anything in your ass that doesn't have a base. Yeah, if you can't Unless grab Unless you want to go to the doctor. Yeah. Unless you, you want to have an embarrassing <laughs> ER trip. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. But Jerry Lee also liked his ladies. And on this vice, Sean wasn't having it. When she threatened to leave the first time, he said, you're my woman. I'll kill you before you leave, (sighs) which caused her to ease back for a little while. (laughs) But it seemed like the group sex was another line she wouldn't cross, especially when her younger sister was suggested to join in by Jerry Lee. Mm -hmm. Wait, back up a second. Uh Say it again. What you just said. I'll just read it if you want me to. (laughs) Yeah, which caused her to ease back for a little while. But it seemed like the group sex was another line she wouldn't cross, especially when her younger sister her younger sister was suggested to join in by Jerry Lee. Oh, 
boy. Yeah. So they're having group sex. We're learning now. And he's suggesting that her younger sister get yeah. it on it. So she didn't want the group sex at all. Right. She wasn't cool with it. No. And, and that didn't make it better. Like, all right. Hey, but what if? What if? <laughs> what if? Hear me out. Your sister. <laughs> your younger sister. I mean, this way, you know, it's like, you know who she is. <laughs> 77 Hang days. <laughs> you, uh-huh. He's not doing this in like a, with like a lot of communication. I'm getting the vibe. He's like, she comes home from a long day of, of like cocktail serving. And then the, oh, the no, living once they room got is married, full. she's set. He's rich as fuck. Well, I'm feeling she's those, chilling at his, she's mansion. waking up with like a living room full of other women. And he's like, Oh yeah, we're going to have group sex now. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. And she's, so she's not participating. She doesn't want to. Oh, but she does. We don't know. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, honestly. That's so he might be like coercing her into sex, which is bad. There's a good chance. Right. It's awful. Yeah. Um, or she's watching him. You want to watch you bang sex. this woman real Or quick? she's staying in another room crying or that, yeah. while he's doing this shit. All right. bad. All bad. But 77 days after they married, she died. Whoa. Seven days? 77 days. 77. It's not the ring, Austin. No, I was thinking <laughs> seven days. No, seven days by sting. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So the official cause <laughs> is an accident, but it attracted attention. Police records were missing. The EMTs who found her body noticed blood under her broken fingernails, scratches on the back of Jerry Lee's hands, and bruises on her body. Her body was also placed- unrelated. Scratches. <laughs> yeah. <and bruises. laughs> These aren't red flags. They're unrelated <laughs> flags. The cat got me. The cat's also dead. <laughs> you know, I'm so glad you said that. Somebody actually suggested a cat. We'll, we'll, we'll figure out why somebody suggested to get a police officer. Uh, oh, and then somebody shocker. very quickly was like, Jerry Lee doesn't have a cat. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Hey, are, you said it was an accident, like a car accident? The official. Sorry, no. I meant cougar. She was found bloody and dead on the guest bed in one of the guest beds in his house. Oh, okay. The official police report in history is that it was an accident. Like she fell? fell on a knife or something? Yeah. We've got more information to come, fellas. Here we go. Oh. <laughs> Would you like us to stop interrupting you so you can give us more information? I don't really care. Um, her body was also <laughs> placed neatly on a fully made bed in one of the guest rooms. Okay. <laughs> she, she died with the bouquet of flowers in her hands. <laughs> <laughs> and the tear stains on her dress. <laughs> Jerry Lee was locked in their master bedroom. And the police were there, and it took his housekeeper of 10 years knocking on the door for him to open. But he very quickly answered with blood on his robe and slippers. A pile of bloody clothes in the corner of the bathroom with more blood sprayed on the walls. And on the white shag carpet of the bedroom. Hang on, you said sprayed on the walls? Mm -hmm. What the fuck was he doing? I don't know. The mayor Nothing killing good. his wife, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to bury the lead, but I think he was killing his wife. <laughs> Is this just another situation where it's like it's not what it looks like? <laughs> How many of those situations do you get though? It's like I know I've said it before, but this really Seriously, isn't what it looks like. Saying. The nearby Memphis newspaper didn't cover much, but a paper in Detroit interviewed her parents, which is Detroit's basically where she's from. Mm-hmm. Um and a whole bunch of shit started coming out. The biggest is that she called her mom the night of her death in tears, saying that she was going to leave him, but he wouldn't let her. She then called her high school sweetheart, Scott, who she had gotten back in touch with due to their very problematic marriage. As far as the night in question, the police did not report foul play. And it was looking like a home field advantage grand jury was about to determine there was no foul play. See, Jerry Lee's world was DeSoto County, Mississippi. Elvis owned Memphis just up the road a little way, but the officials in DeSoto had a special place in Jerry Lee's pocket. When it counted, he made the appropriate contributions to the right men to contribute to make sure that the town stayed right, (laughs) i.e. God-fearing people raising God-fearing families. Does does right mean white in this? Sure. Okay. (laughs) That's what I thought you were building up to. Yeah. (laughs) At least that's what Jerry Lee liked to think, that these are good, God-fearing people running the sheriff's department. And I better cut them a good, big, fat check to make sure that they stay there. 
Yeah. To give you an idea of his sway, <coughs> the night before Sean died, when he drove his car off the road into a ditch, yet again, the police just drove him home without testing him. The incident wasn't even reported by the sheriff's department. The county dispatcher at the time, John Crawford, said, I knew not to log it or nothing. When I heard it was Jerry Lee Lewis, I knew it was just a community service. This was the culture in DeSoto County. So we have a pretty clear understanding of how the death of his most recent wife was handled by them. When the state uh, police department arrived the next morning, county officials had already muddied up the waters of the crime scene. And Jerry Lee was alone with the deputy sheriff, Jack McCalley, in his den for more than an hour. What they were talking about, we don't know. But soon after, state officials learned that county officials already decided unilaterally to use a private medical examiner instead of a public one. So all information gathered now had to go back through the county first before making its way to the state, as well as the details the county wanted omitted from public record. Why? why <clears throat> can I ask, why would you even have a private medical examiner if not for this exact reason? It's 100% only for this reason. Right, like... Yeah. Again, sheriffs are elected. These are elected officials. These people do not really serve anybody other than their, well, I was about to say constituents. Get in there and tell them I didn't kill my wife. (laughs) (laughs) You understand how much I paid you? (laughs) Hey, Doc, you want to write up accident on cause of death? No, I I really think that this was foul play. Puts another thousand. Yeah. (laughs) I think accident. No, I'm serious. Accident. (laughs) Damn it, let me get another shoebox. Um, But a young funeral director named Danny Phillips did leak a little bit of the information to the public. He said, I would never say Jerry Lee Lewis killed that girl, but I'd like to see it investigated. To me, I just can't believe that girl got into that bed and just laid down and died. (laughs) And just popped. You (laughs) You just can't make me believe it. Phillips was mostly concerned about a hypodermic puncture wound on her right arm, the same needle that was found at Jerry Lee's house that day. The official cause of death was fluid in the lungs from methadone, a hundred times the amount that a normal person would take methadone. Damn, he Marilyn Monroe. It seems like it. But the private examiner quickly declared no foul play and the body was sent to be embalmed within a few hours after its arrival. The sheriff said Jerry Lee just cut his finger on some broken glass to explain all the blood in the bathroom. (laughs) 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 What year is this? Oh, shit. Uh, this is like 80... It doesn't matter the year. <laughs> A-cap. Came out, <laughs> came out like a fire hose. Like a red, can, red fire this hose. Is like, this is like 84, 85. So we, we have the technology to test whose blood it is. Oh, 100%. And they're just like, no, nah, that's my blood. Good enough yeah. for me. Yeah. Mop well, it up. Well, we actually, bleach it, boys. <laughs> so her bruises were declared superficial, and there was no sign of domestic Super violence. Super duperficial. And no blood tests were <laughs> given or taken. Oh, oh God. If anyone is still on the fence. <laughs> A-cap forever, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> just suck it. Doesn't matter what year. Fuck them all. <laughs> That's right. If, if anyone is still on the fence at all about Jerry Lee's guilt. I'm still kind of on the fence. Three nights earlier. <laughs> he can pull it around. <laughs> Jerry Lee brought home two women for group sex with Sean. At some point, the girls got s- scared enough to flee his house and beg a neighbor for a ride out of there. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And like I said earlier, the night of, Sean called her mom, who just assumed that she was overly upset and they would talk it over the next morning after she got some sleep. And as for the high school sweetheart she called after, the phone line went dead in the middle of their conversation. That's just fucking Scott. horror movie shit. Yeah. yeah. A week after her funeral, he was back at his favorite bar. Okay, hang on. No. Oh, oh, sorry. I, I have to say, I'm going to call it Jerry Lee Lewis is killed by the, the, the high school sweetheart. Because he vows vengeance. Oh. I don't know how this ends. Didn't that's, we that's... already discuss that Jerry Lee Lewis died in 2022? Yeah, he was playing the long game, Austin. <laughs> that's what he wants you to think. 
<laughs> you know how Grant lies to us at yeah. the beginning of every podcast. Red herring, bro. That's fucking stupid. <laughs> Carry on, Grant. <laughs> But a week- How dare you pay attention, Austin? <laughs> the <laughs> one podcast I pay attention. <laughs> a week after her funeral, he was back at his favorite bar playing the piano and making up a song with lyrics going, if you leave me, I'll have another in your bed. Jeez. He called her sister while super fucked up not too long after that and said, your sister's dead. You want to have some group sex? (laughs) (laughs) Now that the bus kills done. (laughs) Your sister's dead. She was a bad girl, and now she's dead. Fuck. God damn. damn. His sixth marriage to Carrie McCarver lasted for 21 years, from April 1984 to June She was a good girl. They had one (laughs) child, Jerry Lee Lewis III. (laughs) Jerry Lee Lewis the third, which is not how that works. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, usually it's <laughs> usually remember Junior right, died, right, 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 and he just decided to name <laughs> another one. <laughs> it's like The Simpsons just snowballed too. <laughs> Jerry Lee Lewis the third try. Uh, that's awesome, bro. <laughs> you can't write that shit. That's just <laughs> seriously. He might as well have named this kid third times the charm. <laughs> <laughs> that was his middle name. <laughs> Jerry Lee Lewis, third times Jerry Lee, third times the charm, Lewis the third. In 1993, Lewis moved to Ireland with his family, and is what was suggested, but he denied, to be a move to avoid issues with the IRS. He lived in a rented house in Westminster Road in Fox Rock, Dublin. And during his time there, he was sued by the German company uh, Nuyo Constantin Film Production for failure to appear at a concert in Munich in 1993. Lewis returned to the U S in 1997 after his tax issues had been resolved by an Irish promoter. Okay. I know just whatever. <laughs> but anyway, they moved back to DeSoto County. He wrote a check to the IRA with his, <laughs> yeah, seriously, with his family. Lewis married his seventh wife, Judith Lewis, which <laughs> is <laughs> Myra Gail Brown's brother's former wife. All right? Keep Whoa. it in the family. The 13-year-old he married, her older brother's ex-wife, he married for his seventh wife. Oh, this family tree is just a bramble of fucking kudzu and it's, thorns. It's a stump, baby. Oh, my God, <laughs> <Yeah>. dude. Man. <laughs> uh, the next day, Lewis <laughs> severed business ties with his daughter, Phoebe. Phoebe Lewis Lofton, who was his manager for years and years, and revoked her power of attorney after he married this woman. So there's probably some weird shit going on there. In 2017, Lewis sued his daughter and her husband, claiming that she owed him substantial sums of money. In the lawsuit, Lewis and his wife Judith Lewis, Judith Lewis, sorry, and his son Jerry Lee Lewis the third. Nah, she's a Judas. You got it. Also claimed that Lofton defam- defamed them on Facebook. Lewis Lofton and her husband countersued, claiming Judith Lewis and Jerry Lee Lewis the third <laughs> interfered in the business relationship. In April 2019, U.S. District Judge Neil uh, Bridgers ruled that most of the claims were barred by a three-year statute of limitations, except the defamation claims. So it was, I feel like that district judge was like, this is just, who's married to who? Who's related to who? <laughs> Why are you suing each other? Just get, 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 get out of here. Get you know? drunk in my courtroom. <laughs> get the fuck out of here. Like, yeah. Um, Hang on. If you can't defame somebody on Facebook, where can you do it? You know? Well, That's an excellent point. Lewis had a minor stroke in Memphis on February 28th of 2019. He had to cancel several appearances. He died at his home on October 28th of 2022 in Nesbitt, Mississippi, or DeSoto County. By the hands of? At the age of 87. (laughs) And a net worth of 10 to maybe $15 million. Lewis's funeral was held on November 5th in his hometown of Faraday, Louisiana. The service was officiated by his cousin and his cousin's son, to a relatively small audience, but was broadcasted live on the internet as well as local stations in the southeast. There you go. That's Jerry Lee Lewis. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, Grant. 
Yeah. What a life. Yeah. yeah. What I was. Again, it's just that whole like, like I said at the very beginning, I think I'm going to try and play with the idea of separating art from artist. You know what I mean? Because like, he was a real piece of shit. Yeah. But like, kind of fucking awesome. What was the funeral <laughs> like? Because that funeral had to be badass. <laughs> I feel like he's the type of guy that would have like a lot of weird stipulations. I was literally thinking the whole town of Faraday, Louisiana just fucking went off the rails for that funeral. Oh, yeah. Like I was just like, oh, everybody's drunk. There's a parade. Like it must have been insane. Someone's lighting a piano on fire for sure. Dude, light uh, fucking doing rails of coke off of his casket. Jerry Lee would have wanted this. (laughs) 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 Just take a shot of grain alcohol and smash the glass on the casket. Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, what a fucker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah what a, I mean, seriously, what, what a, a fucker. fucking guy. <laughs> <laughs> what a fucker. <laughs> so he, he died married, right? Yeah. That's wild. That woman was like, fucking fuck. Fine, fine. Yeah, like, <laughs> this finally paid off. <laughs> All the bojangles I snuck in were like fucking finally paid off. Uh, apparently for him, it was like seventh time is the charm. Uh, according to her, at least, and every single other one of his ex-wives came out being like, he was horrible. Yeah. I divorced him because of these litany of ter- terrible reasons. Apparently, he was so old and pretty much <laughs> enfeebled by that point <laughs> that they would just, like, go to a meet and three once a week or, like, go catch a football game. Thank God you know, no one showed him any Viagra. <laughs> Seriously. Because if we would have found out about that. Oh, my God. <laughs> he would have had round seven, bro. <laughs> He'd live for another 30 years. <laughs> uh, the, you Can know, you believe I'm 103? <laughs> <laughs> Starts playing the piano with his dick. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, on stage and in the studio, incredible. Seriously. He was massively important to American music in general. Apparently one time, like, John Lennon went to one of his shows and came backstage and, like, bowed in front of him and, like, kissed his hand. It, I'm pretty sure he was high and just making kind of a little deal out of it or whatever. Jerry Lee was, like, Right, thanks. What the hell? John Lennon's also here? a weird fucker. He was a weird guy. John Lennon was like, I also strangled a woman. <laughs> <laughs> a man of good taste you are. <laughs> but like notoriously cool to women, John Lennon was. <laughs> oh yes, he was. Uh-huh. <laughs> but that's that whole thing where like especially back in the day, it was almost expected. And it seemed like Jerry Lee Lewis is one of the main like contributors to this idea of the lifestyle, of the rock and roll lifestyle. I mean, yeah. Of just Fuck whoever you want, do whatever the hell you want. Live hard, live rough. Yeah, that whole thing, you know. And I mean, personally, I love the music that that he did, but also more importantly, what it led to, you know. And that's it's a tough thing. It's like if this guy was never around, what would fucking music sound like these days? But also like would society be better if he was never around? I mean, what's more it's rock tough, and roll dude. than marrying a 13-year-old cousin? A couple things. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like a list? A <laughs> big pause there. <laughs> Was it? Do you think uh, the Rolling Stones would have been trashing uh, hotel rooms if Jerry Lee Lewis hadn't? Right. You and know? I mean, also, the Rolling Stones wouldn't have been as inspired as they were. Mm. I mean, it's by true. Jerry Lee's music. Yeah, I mean, they looked at old American blues and right. rock and country and all that stuff, right. all that swamp fire rock. Honestly, man, like I, I know that the Rolling Stones are who they are, but I can't stand Mick Jagger, dude. That's no, that's that's reasonable. I can't, I can't stand him. I, I don't He's like. Kind of annoying. I don't like, I don't like him. I don't like the Rolling Stones. I think their music is fucking annoying. Well, yeah, it's annoying. It's annoying to me. I understand that it's it's. It's very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, I know that the Rolling Stones changed music in their They're own They're influential. Right. Yeah, influential. Thank you. Mm-hmm. But it's just not It's just not for me. Sure. I'm not sure if it's just because I've, I've heard it a, a thousand times. Fucking Maybe. Hates Nirvana, but like, you know. So. Yeah. 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 And Joseph, he hates the fucking Beatles. He's stupid about it. I don't know that I hate the Beatles. I think I feel like, I think honestly, when I like. It's kind of the same, but I kind of feel. It's so overplayed. I like the Beatles more than I like the Rolling Stones, but it is the same kind of thing. Yeah. Where it's like, 
okay, you guys have a couple of cool songs, but like the rest of them kind of annoying. And the more stories that I hear about you guys, yeah, you guys kind of fucking suck. Yeah. The, the less I care. Right. And also like, I'm so sick of Beatles fans just being like, do, Do you know how important the Beatles are? It's like, listen, man, Rubber Soul's a great album. Fine. I will not argue with you about that. But shut the fuck up right. with the fucking John Lennon and the They were very important. They were important, but like, fucking guy, give it a rest. They were musical geniuses. <laughs> One of them. <laughs> yeah, I want to hold your hand. It's so influential. <laughs> At the time, it really was. It really yeah. Was. I mean, there's. <laughs> I think the Beatles have more songs that I can get into than the Rolling Stones do. Yeah. And I mean, I like the Rolling Stones well enough, but I think that's the problem with classic rock too, is that all of us grew up like with our dads jamming it, except for, I guess, Jaime, cause he never heard journey before. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, my dad listened to Hispanic music. Yeah. But like, I think the rest of us, like I remember fucking, I think it was like 90.3, the Eagle, the fucking Kentucky classic rock station playing constantly in my dad's truck. And it would just be like, I hope you're ready for three dog night and the Rolling Stones. Stones and ACDC and fucking who cares, Will, man. Fucking. I love all those bands. But I, I think the important thing to remember is that, like, at the time, it was insanely new, controversial. Yeah. All of these things. It was. Very I'm, pretty, it was. You know, I'm pretty burnt looking, down on ACDC as well. I, I don't like ACDC. Well, they were not really up. that great. I'm burnt I, think out. AC, I think Hell sounds like the fucking drums to an ACDC <laughs> album, man. It's just fucking. Nah, that's the Pixies. Pixies drums? Ugh. I like the Pixies. Pixies, as they're fine. The Pixies aren't bad. I just hate how they record the drums. I just, ugh, it kills me. What do you think, actually, Grant? Uh, I think they just the horrifically The second record. half of their albums that got better. I do understand. I do understand where you're coming from. Yeah, I can't listen to it. Like every time no. I like hear it's the, like, like how they record the drums, it, it hurts me. But it's like it's it's those kinds of bands. It's like it's like ACDC, Rolling Stones, uh, fucking even Metallica. Like I can't stand their music, but I understand that if it weren't for them, a lot of bands could not have. A lot of bands that I love could not have done what they did. Like they wouldn't that. exist without yeah. them, and that's like, totally fair. Like Van Halen. I think Van Halen, Leonard Skinner, like those kinds of bands are so fucking cool, and it couldn't have happened Death without... Death Leopard sucks! <laughs> <laughs> it, couldn't have happened, it couldn't have happened without fucking ACDC. What right. has seven arms and sucks? <laughs> Death <laughs> Leopard! <laughs> I do say, like, one thing that I find hilarious, and this kind of talks about um, Lewis here, is... There are so many artists back in the day that like people were like, that's devil music. Mm -hmm. And then you listen to it now, you're like, this shit is devil yeah. music. Right. Like yeah. I but remember my parents get that on the radio before all the terrible well, it's not terrible, a lot of it's great. And I don't give a fuck about lyrics in the sense that they're like sending us all to hell or whatever. But yes, it is vanilla wafers compared oh, yeah. to the oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. like yeah so but my like, mom thought <laughs> wouldn't exist without you know gray balls of fire or you, you know. wouldn't have slayer without jerry lee lewis exactly in a weird way <laughs> so in a weird way no, that's, that's absolutely right i grew up thinking that kiss was devil music and I didn't listen to Kiss until I was like 19. I was like, this shit? And ah. Kiss is some dad rock. <laughs> dad. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. They just sound like they just want to have a good time. Yeah, I was like, this is dad music? <laughs> <laughs> That's just why dad music. That's all that is. Yeah, seriously. I think it's when uh, fucking, was it Gene, Gene Simmons? Gene Simmons. Mm. Didn't he like fucking, oh, no, sorry. That was uh, Ozzy who, a, who bit the. The head head of fire. That? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but didn't Gene Simmons it. do something similar? You might be thinking of Alice Cooper because he Alice bit the Cooper, head off yeah. the chicken at a uh, music festival. Yeah, I, honestly, Gene Simmons was a fucking marketing genius. The team behind Kiss, I mean, they mm -hmm. have pinball machines, they have toys, oh, they yeah. have fucking water yep. bottles. They, I mean, they have everything. They have Kiss casket covers. Do oh, you yeah. know that there's a, a Kiss themed uh, uh, cruise ship? Yeah. I did not, but that's I go. not super surprising. Ooh, bonkers. I, it's going to be remember the band 311. They had a cruise ship. Really? No way. Yeah. 311? 311. <laughs> huh. Yeah. Crazy. I'm think of a 311 song. I, I can't. I guess Murder Schmurder is going to be coming at you live from the Kiss Cruise. <laughs> that, honestly, that would be it's pretty fucking cool. It's spelled with a K, cool. right? It's got to be. It's got to be. So if you guys if you guys subscribe to the Patreon, you give us the co the cost of a couple cups of coffee a month, 
you get a lot more content. You get to hear more of us, which I know if you're listening to this, you are, you obviously are thirsty for more of us. Who wouldn't be? Mm-hmm. Who wouldn't be? Really? And you get to hear us do more fun things, stupid things, like going on the Kiss Cruise <laughs> and hanging out with a bunch of fucking sun-eating 60-year-olds, I assume. I mean, yeah, I, don't know if you, I don't know if you guys <laughs> yeah. feel the same way, but like we've but really been coming off. into our own here. I black metal makeup. <laughs> yeah. I don't know about you, dear listener, but I think we've really been coming into our own here. And it's only going to get better, especially if we're on a cruise. Got a couple of pina coladas in the old belly. Mm -hmm. Especially if you ease the financial tension a little bit. (sighs) Give us some breathing room. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. Think about how funny we can be. Live our dream. Now, email us at don't email trash rule at gmail.com telling us what what, what should they tell us this time? Uh, the craziest concert they've oh, ever seen. Your opinion about the Rolling Stones or the Beatles oh. or Jerry Lee Lewis or Dad Rock in general? Just I would just say, th- give us your y- your opinion of the most overrated or underrated classic bands. Mm, yeah, that's a good one. I like that because huh. I'm always down to listen to some some new music, like Uriah Heep or Ten Years After. Mm. Nobody knows those fucking bands. Yeah, uh, that, that's from that era. Give us your uh, collective soul hot takes, you dad listening mofos. There was a there was a prog band called uh, Gentle Gentle Giant. They were yeah. so ahead of their time. They were very good, and I would have never have, I would have never have known had I had just not gone down like this weird YouTube rabbit hole. And I was like, where the fuck were these guys? This is insane. Yeah, but it was just like they played at a time where it's just like I don't think a lot of people were ready for it. Really glad that's the weird YouTube rabbit hole you fell down because I feel like could have ended a different way. <laughs> <laughs> in this day and age, yes. Yeah. When I was like 19, 20 years old, I was a little bit more okay. hesitant in my searches. Instead of Gentle John, it's like, did you know the earth is flat? <laughs> <laughs> and have you heard of the Rothschilds? <laughs> I was going to say, I think I was right on the cusp when people weren't absolutely out of their fucking mind. <laughs> <Yeah. yet. laughs> there was still like a little bit right. of like, ah, right. it's not, how deep like, can I go? <laughs> exactly. Like, I can't tell you what political side I'm on, but the but the world is definitely round. <laughs> <laughs> That's the era that I grew up in. It's good to check in every once in a while. <laughs> what a good time period that was. <laughs> what a great time period we're in now. <sighs> oh, yes, it's wonderful. Everything's getting better all the time. So don't forget to plug in, listen to Murder Schmurder, get away from it all, while we'll remind you of some horrible stuff that happened far away ago. Um, <laughs> and uh, like, rate, review, and subscribe. It really does help. Even Please. If you, just, just seriously. It helps more than you think. That's true. It really does. Anyways, thank you guys so much. This is Austin. This is Jamie. This is Joseph. And this is Grant. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Like what you hear? Subscribe. Follow us on Instagram at Trashville underscore USA. And if there's a true crime story you want the gang to cover, email us at don't email Trashville at gmail.com. Murder Schmurder is produced by Jamie. Our tracking engineer is Grant. And our mix and mastering engineer is Julie. Incidental music and our theme song is provided by Jules. This has been another production of... <laughs>